for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. Welcome back to today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it. NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello. Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> What do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it!
Every pet is different. The one thing they have in common is you. The need to find not just a home, but family. Whether you adopt or donate, you can help clear the shelters. Visit cleartheshelters.com for more information. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
welcome back to you today. We got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Yes. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Start today. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now.
Every pet is different. The one thing they have in common is you. The need to find not just a home, but family. Whether you adopt or donate, you can help clear the shelters. Visit cleartheshelters.com for more information. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the press now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. We got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. News is happening now. To look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. NBC News, streaming free now.
brings joy, companionship, and love. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Quite like a dog, which is why Sue Bell created Homeward Trails in Fairfax Station, Virginia. Her mission to find forever homes for as many of these adorable animals as possible. It's been 20 years since you founded Homeward Trails and you've rescued over 43,000 animals. Tell me about how it all began. I was vacationing in West Virginia. We drove by a building where there were a bunch of dogs tied up outside and we saw that it was the local animal control. So we stopped to donate some biscuits and we found out that their animal uh, shelter had been hit by a flash flood and they had lost 50 animals who had drowned. Determined to help, Sue took home three dogs that day with a mission to find them homes. From there, it snowballed. And then I became obsessed and turned it into a nonprofit organization uh, with the goal of rescuing 50 animals to pay it forward for the 50 animals who drowned. But I reached that number 50 a lot quicker than I thought. And once I did, I was hooked. Homeward Trails also provides the animals with much needed medical and behavioral care. How does it feel to be working with animals? Um, when it's good, it's good. Um, there, are, there are days where we wish they could just talk to us. It's fantastic when you have that breakthrough. When you take a dog who has been abused or who has been neglected or shut down and see them literally start to trust, to start to appreciate the grass and the sunshine, it's transformative. Describe the feeling you feel when you see a dog go into their forever home. Just a really warm feeling, knowing that they're going to go on to be the center of that family's attention. So you fostered six dogs, mm -hmm. adopted two. Yes. Uh -huh. Those were Ray and Tyra. Yeah, they're total opposites. <laughs> Ray is a 70-pound black lab mix. Tyra is a feisty six-pound little pup. My partner Jake decided that since she stands on her back legs and has the short little arms, we should name her Tyra for Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> So, seeing those dogs have the shot at life and love that they deserve, those are the dogs that keep us all going. So this is your dog? Yep, this is Mia. Oh, She I came to me just a couple years ago. What does Sue mean to the community? She's a force. She's one of those people that's you know, boots on the ground. She goes and does it herself. She doesn't just put someone in direct. What do you hope is next for Homework Trails? If I'm going to be honest, I would love to go out of business. I would love that every animal has a home and that the shelters and the rescues could all shut down. You don't hear many founders say that they want to go out of business. I know. <laughs> I feel grateful all the time for Ray and Tyra. Ray was found as a stray. Tyra was dropped to be euthanized. And now here they are. These like full, beautiful lives that you would just have no idea. There's so many animals in shelters waiting for families who will see them as full, beautiful stories. For me, there's no better feeling, and that's what's kept me in this for, for 20 years. It never gets old. Given Sue's dedication to animals, we were excited to let her in on a little secret. Sue, we are surrounded by so many people who love you and appreciate all that you do here at this adoption center. Um, I actually wanted to fill you in on a little secret I have, but to do that, I need some help. Okay. Mia? Mia, come over here. Hi, Mia. Come here, Mia. <laughs> Our sponsor, Fresh Pet, heard about all the amazing work that you do to help improve the lives of so many dogs that they want to present Homer Trails with a $20,000 donation. Oh my God. Our sponsor, Fresh Pet, also knows how many you have to feed when caring for all these dogs that they are also going to donate 1,000 meals over the course of a year. Oh my God. Sweet. So sweet. Thanks to our sponsor, Fresh Pet, we were able to pull off that awesome surprise. And guess what? Mm. We have another surprise. Oh, what? Homeward Trails decided to name an entire puppy litter after the Today Show family. Oh my god. And Hoda, you're the mama. And then Wait, the rest what? are little babies. Where are her pups? You're yeah, my you're pups? the pups. Savannah, oh. Al, Chanel, Craig, Carson, oh, Dylan, and Baby Which one do I look like? Is that me? I think oh, I, oh, oh, you're, 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 you're my mom. 
oh, I'll take care of you forever, oh, no, yeah, baby. You take care of me. You're the mom, just like you're the mom here I'll to take us, too. I love that. Um, Donna Sweet. didn't make the cut, but you know. That's <laughs> Maybe next year. Bow ties are part of 14-year-old Darius Brown's signature look. I love mixing my bow ties. But it's not just about the look for this New Jersey eighth grader, it's a mission. In the last four years, Darius has focused on making bow ties for dogs, helping to get them noticed in crowded animal shelters and adopted into permanent homes. With a cute photo, adoptions happen three times faster. How many bow ties for dogs have you made? It's so many I can't even keep count, but if you I- You gotta <clears throat> keep count, come on. <laughs> But if I had to make an estimate, I'll say over a thousand. He got the idea after seeing neighborhoods destroyed by Hurricanes Harvey and Irma. I will always see on television and wonder how come there was all these people getting helped, but not any animals or dogs being helped. Never in my wildest dream that I think it would turn into such an amazing mission that he has that's inspired so many people. Darius took up sewing when he was nine years old. Was it really hard to get the hang of sewing? <laughs> <laughs> yes, at first it was really hard to sew. But he stuck with it out of love for a family connection, starting with his big sister. When she learned how to sew, it was because of our grandmother. And then our grandmother passed away. So I felt as though that when my sister had to teach me how to sew, it was like that family passing down the line thing. And for a kid doing all he can for others, is your mother on board for you to get the dog? Yes. She wasn't <laughs> at first, but now she is. <laughs> A love of animals touching more lives than he ever imagined. For today, Rahima Ellis, NBC News, Newark. That is so sweet. And Dylan, I can't believe he's in eighth grade. Eighth grade, yeah. I was not doing anything like that in eighth grade. But I'm glad he also made it so that they don't have to tie it. Because bow ties, yes. I mean, for humans, are hard. I was going to say, yeah, those dogs would really struggle to do that. I was raised by a bow tie guy, and I had plenty of trouble having my dad yeah, try to teach me. It took you years, right? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Yeah, who's this? News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. I've got a sweet story for you about man's best friend and his best friend, a stuffed unicorn. This is Sisu, who was picked up by animal control in North Carolina after he kept breaking into a local Dollar General store and trying to steal this stuffed purple unicorn. The animal control officer was so taken with him that she bought the toy for Sisu before taking him to the local shelter. They posted a picture of the pup with his best friend saying, this is what happens when you break into the Dollar General consistently. Now, the best news of all, as of yesterday afternoon, Sisu has a forever home and Dollar General says they'll be sending along a few extra purple unicorns to make Sisu's homecoming perfect. So now Sisu has a best friend and a family. So sweet. And whatever Joe. company produces Sisu just got a big boost today thanks to that adorable little picture. Yeah, it looks Getting like loved he's, on by a dog. Exactly. It looks like he's smiling in some of those pictures. Joe, thank you so much for that.
it's crazy to look back on it and see how much we've really done. Goose control just all over the place. We keep geese out of areas where the public may come in contact with you know, aggressive birds or goose poop that may cause disease. This is Flyaway Bet and Flyaway Hoop, two of our top-notch goose dogs. Our border collies work very similarly to a wolf or coyote, so they move with their heads down and their tails in between their legs and they stalk things but the border collie doesn't have a kill instinct, so they don't do any damage to the wildlife. They just convince the birds that there's a predator in the environment, even though um, it's not a real predator. Geese are very pattern-oriented birds. It takes about 30 days for the dogs to convince the birds that it's not a safe place to be. They'll leave for short periods of time and come back and try to find a time during the day that the dogs might not be there. We're not just out there chasing birds with dogs. And you know, everybody's like, oh, I'd like to get a border collie and start my own goose control business. But there are years and years and years of knowledge behind bird biology and ecology and activity that make our dogs so effective and keep our dogs and the birds safe. We have six that are what I consider our personal dogs. So they are my husband's dog, my dog, my daughter's dog, and the dogs that I do my demos with and that they come home with us every day. It's very, very rare that we go anywhere, even out to dinner, um, that the dogs are not with us. You can instantly see a switch in them, that they're excited and they know that it's time to go to work. If the doors are open to the van, they're getting in it every time and you just see it it's all over their face they're just this intense excitement they're the best employees you could ever have for sure they never call in sick they never complain they always want to go to work and they do it 365 days a year 24 hours a day if i let them live from ukraine from uvalde texas from mayfield kentucky to cover the news you have to be in it this is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Everybody, good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just again. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Start today. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free now. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
For me, the, the favorite part is not only, you know, being able to, to work with my dog, but to do it in a meaningful way that we're actually accomplishing something, you know, getting the message out to the public about being safe around wildlife. My name is Mark Beal. I'm Natural Resources Program Manager here at Glacier National Park, and this is Gracie. She's a six-year-old border collie, and she's Glacier's Park Ranger. Okay, let's go. She's specially trained to approach wildlife in a slow, safe manner and then just kind of push them away from uh, areas where there's lots of people to an area where people can still see them, but there's at least you know 40 or 50 yards buffer between them. From 2013 to 2016, we did a study up at Logan Pass. There's so many people up there that the predators avoid that area. Uh, the wildlife basically identified people with safety. And so what we do with Gracie then is introduce a predator back into the equation. And to them, you know, we're hoping that she looks like a, a wolf-like thing, you know, with big teeth, you know, that might make them move away. I came up with the idea just seeing what other parks and other areas were doing. Our sister park in Canada contracted with a company that uses border collies to keep deer out of the Waterton Lakes town site. So I saw all that happening and you know it just so happened that you know we'd gotten Gracie about a year and a half before as a family pet and I thought well you know we have a border collie breed and you know maybe we can do something here and um, use that to help address an issue that we've been having for decades and Glacier and many other national parks, which is people getting too close to habituated wildlife. Okay, let's go. It was pretty much a 10 week uh, training period that Gracie went to, and then we learned how to work together and read each other and uh, do the job successfully and safely. Good girl. I definitely tell when she loves her job. Just driving from our house, you know, into the park when we come across that bridge into the park headquarters area, uh, she'll perk up right away and she'll start uh, patrolling in the vehicle. She'll start looking out the windows, and you can tell she's getting excited. You know, knows that she's going to be working, and she really looks forward to it. All right, this way. What we're doing now is we're kind of starting to taper off on our work with moving the, the deer out of the housing area, especially as other areas start melting out and forage becomes available. Once access to Logan Pass is available, visitation will just um, explode. And so that's pretty much the time that uh, you know, we try and get up to these high visitation areas where there's wildlife hanging out and uh, remind people how to be safe. The biggest and best part of this job is to, you know, see Gracie do her thing, you know, that she was bred to do, you know, that's in the border collie genetics, which is move um, animals where we want them to be moved, and then um, working with her, watching her interact with the public, and the public interact with her and me, and give us that opportunity to get that message out in a in a different way than um, you know might usually occur. So Dottie's a little truffle hunting dog. She will search out and find the right truffles because they put an aroma up and she just does that one after the other. Lots of truffles. I'm Deb Walker and this is my little truffle dog Dottie. And I'm Bob Walker and this is my mouse chasing dog Roger. The truffle hunting we do is on private land. We maybe go out once or twice a week during truffle season, yeah. which is, you know, plus or minus December to plus or minus March. There it is, right there. You get to follow your dog around the woods all day oh. and basically give them cookies for finding truffles that you put in your bag. It's, yeah. it's, it's really a kick. Good girl. It's like, the whole team comes together and everything, it's like harmony and the lights come on and everybody's happy and the birds are singing and... Yes. Good girl. There you go. You get your face in the mud and it's just a blast. Then here's this little thing glowing in the ground. It's a truffle. It's, we're gonna do something amazing with that. It's a nice truffle. We use it for making oil. So I just want truffles. I don't need the culinary ones. I can do small ones, big ones. All I want is the gas. I'm collecting the gas and putting it into oil. And the white truffles are small. We need a lot of them. 
So that's got a nice aroma. So it's all about catching the, the gas. The ripe truffles put off a lot of gas, and that's what everybody wants. They want the gas that's coming off the oil. This is naturally infused. It's not a chemical. It's the real deal. Once he's done with the infusing, as, as long as the truffles are still in good shape, you can take them and then shave them on your dinner. So that, that's kind of fun. Oh, good job. It's right there. Look at that. And I retired early at 44 and started dog training. And I do private uh, truffle dog training. So we're all out here for a great uh, truffle hunt today. Picking a, a good dog for truffle hunting is, um, is pretty important if you want to hunt truffles. What you're looking for is a dog that is food motivated. So when you're training a truffle dog, really what you're doing is training the owner. The dogs actually smell stuff naturally. We just need to teach them, oh, when they smell this scent, to tell me about it. And the way that they do that, we do that, is we teach them to reward the dog. It's all about timing of the reward. So we teach the owners of the dogs how to reward their dog, how not to correct them. Let him dig, and as soon as you see the truffle, cover it with your hand. Good boy, there you go. And then bring the cookies out to him. Yeah. Oh, there it is, there it is, oh, right there, there it is, yay. Yes, oh, good boy. Good boy. Dogs can smell the aroma of the truffle that comes up out of the ground when they're ripe. So before they're ripe, they don't put off any scent, so the dogs won't find them. But as soon as they start to ripen, there's that scent, so they take you right to that spot. And that is the quality control for the truffle because you want a ripe truffle and you don't want the unripe ones. I've been harvesting truffles for close to 20 years. The reputation of the truffle was really suffering. Since we started using the dogs, we've started to really see how good the truffles can be. And um, they basically saved the industry. There's a thing called a scent cone. Think of it like a, a, a fire pit. The smoke kind of blows around over here. Well, that's what the scent's doing. It's blowing this way and that. So when you finally train a dog to do what you want it to do, to watch it work the scent is exciting. I mean, it's like your, your kid just had a home run, I guess, and it's, it's fun to watch. You, you take these little dogs and you just put them out there and boom, 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 they're doing it. Boom. Oh, honing in on the little spot. There it is. The dig, 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 dig. I mean, and they just do it time after time. It's so amazing yeah, that it, they can actually smell the truffles and and find them. Say, there it is. There it is. Yep, there it is. That's it right there. Look at you, good girl. You can, oh, and there's another one. There's a little two. Yeah, very good. Very good girl. Welcome back to you today. We got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It felt like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> Our dogs are here. You walk into the school and everybody's like, oh, look at the dog, look at the dog. Everybody stops what they're doing, comes over right over to the dog and, you know, starts, oh, can I touch the dog? Can I hold the dog? 
<laughs> I'm Terry Gologli. I'm the founder of Therapy Dogs of Long Island. We have about 18 handlers now, and we work in a lot of different types of facilities, hospitals, nursing homes, schools, <laughs> and we saw over 13,000 people last year. I don't think you can make a dog do dog therapy. You can train them, but they have to love it. Terry's here with Pumpkin, and we're going to read our story. So we do reading to dogs when we go to the uh, grammar schools. I can see you. A nurse. Very good. Reading to dogs has really made them feel much better about reading out loud because it decreases their anxieties and that's the bottom line. So it's for kids who have issues reading. When you read to a dog, they're not judgmental. It takes away that fear. And it's also the comfort of holding a dog when you're reading or petting a dog while you're reading. It relaxes you. Super job reading. We had this one little kid and the book was on the ground. The dog stepped on the book. He goes, that dog has no regard for that author. On, I have go. three let's dogs. Go. Their names are Barbie, Ken, and Pumpkin. And they're all certified therapy dogs. Each one has their own gift. So Ken is very obedient. He'll visit when you ask him to, but he's not going to be in your face. Good, good job. Barbie is the quintessential therapy dog. She is super friendly, but she's gonna come right up to you and she's gonna lean on you and she's gonna put her face in your face. She is just gonna love you up. And Pumpkin is small and she's afraid of nothing. And uh, she loves children and babies. The reason I started to become a therapy dog handler was because of Lily. Not a good uh, prognosis. Um, they usually only live to two and a half years. I discovered that her brother could make her smile. And for her to smile, that was a huge thing. And I just felt that the energy of dogs and children were similar. And I said I was gonna get therapy dogs and visit her. She's in a wheelchair and I took her hand and put it on Ken's head and she started processing right away. And we've been visiting every week since. Give him a big hug. Give him a big hug. She responds, she'll smile. You know, these are things that she doesn't normally do but she does when the dogs are there. Oh! <laughs> hey, good job. Good, good job. Good job. Good job. Dogs are the best medicine. They just cheer you up inside and bring back a lot of good memories. <laughs> oh. The dog is so cute. They'll start to engage where with a human, there might not be any engagement. How are you, pretty girl? What other instance can you go over to something that's living and breathing, uh, get love from them, pet them, hug them, and they don't care what your mental capacity is or what your physical looks are. It's that unconditional love and non-judgment, I think, that brings the most joy. Barbie! I pitch, I pitch. It's her favorite thing to get petted. Rosa, one of the students, contacted us to get the dogs in once a month. There was people in my class that were mourning visibly, and the whole school just had that kind of feel to it. There seems to be a stigma around mental illness, especially with teenagers who don't know much about it. And so I was thinking of a way to make mental health resources more palatable, and so I thought of therapy dogs. Gives love freely and receives the love back. Since we started visiting schools, more and more schools are asking for therapy dogs, and they are really seeing the impact, and now they're starting to get their own dogs, which is what they need. They really need a dog in school every day. If you can bring joy to people in any circumstance, why wouldn't you? I have those type of dogs that will go visit and bring joy.
Thank you for joining us for another episode of My Pet Tale, where we ask people like yourself how their pets have to shape their lives. So first of all, can you introduce me to your pups? Are they around? Yeah, Boo is here. <gasps> Carl is out for the day. <laughs> Hi, Boo. This is Boo Bush. Hello. If, if Boo could speak, how do you think he'd introduce himself? She, um, she would go, she'd go, hello, my name is Boo and I'm a gorgeous girl. And gorgeous, gorgeous girls love to relax. Oh, she loves it. She just always loves being at my feet. Like no matter where I am, she's just like always there. It's so cute. That's so sweet. How would you describe her personality? Oh, she is a loud, rash, opinionated, can I say <laughs> I mean, it, technically, it's a technical word. It is a technical word. You're right. <laughs> In all the best ways. She she loves her food, she loves her people, she loves attention, and she can be very, very loud. <laughs> kind of sounds like me. Does she sound like you? <laughs> oh, I think she gets it all. I, she gets it all for me. <laughs> How did you come up with the name Boo? Barkley, my other dog, he, for some reason back in the day, I used to call him Kitty, like, from Monsters, Inc. because oh, he's so fluffy. And so that's where, so Boo, so like Kitty and Boo, like she was the Boo. That's so cute, like, I love that part of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you also have another fur baby. Your yeah. fiance Wells has Carl, which I love yeah. when a dog is named a serious name. <laughs> yeah. But how is the blending of the two? Was there a power struggle between Carl and Boo or were they pretty seamless? There was a power struggle in the beginning for sure. Carl is obviously the bigger dog, but Boo won that power struggle. She's definitely the alpha. I just saw you posted this gorgeous photo of you and Wells. Boo, I was just asking, do you think that you'll be a part of the wedding ceremony? Um, I wish she could, but whenever I have fittings for like events with like really long dresses and stuff, she likes to lay down on them. She's very much a girl's girl. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so she is, I, I don't know. She would be way too excited, make it way too much about herself, get everyone dirty because she loves to jump up on people. And same thing with, um, with Carl. I just think it would be way too many people. It breaks, it breaks my heart um, that they won't be there, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> you also have to make the dress the moment on that day, I think. Yes, yeah. We um, can't have Boo's dresses moment. <laughs> oh, exactly, Boo, this one moment is not yours. <laughs> it's not yours, honey, sorry. <laughs> Where do you all go with your dogs on a road trip? Like, where's your favorite place to take your dogs? Um, I love taking Boo to the beach. I've taken her, It's I haven't taken her a, a lot of times just because it's like a whole day event mm -hmm. and it is a lot of work and stuff. But um, she's just so cute on the beach and she just has so much fun. And sometimes I'll take her up to um Malibu to do like a hike up there and um it's just it's great I want to do more road trips mm -hmm. with the dogs like even I I, I don't know I really want to take them up to like Big Sur or something mm -hmm. and do like a cute little camping trip up yeah. there the the picture you painted it's a very um glamorous movie I feel like it's it's like a, right? a yeah like it's giving me parent trap vibes a little bit I'm really into it but I just feel like I also love that Boo gets Malibu and Big Sur and nothing less she <laughs> <deserves it> all. <laughs> we're not taking her to Coney Island <laughs> no you sure aren't um have you noticed like what your are your parenting styles you and Wells parenting styles too Carl and Boo, are they similar? Are they different? Is there one who's like more of a disciplinarian than the other? I I would, I think Wells would say that I'm, he's more of the disciplinarian than I am, which is crazy. Cause I think when we have kids, 
I will be more of the disciplinarian, our poor children. But I'm just like, dogs can't speak for themselves. They're innocent, they don't know. <laughs> That's true. And I know that that is, you know, you were talking about how uh, passionate you are for adopting and for rescuing pets and rescuing dogs. When did that passion start for that? I mean, here's, here's the, I've, I've always had um, rescued pets. My first pet was a cat from a shelter. <laughs> um, and because we lived in New York and stuff in like a really, 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 really old building, um, he would bring us mice, his presents. It was like, it was like a whole, <laughs> it was a whole thing. And um, so I've always been, I, I, I'm assuming that it stems from my parents. If it's always been embedded in my genetic brain DNA structure for how, what to do with pets. <laughs> but um, uh, I just think that there are so many animals out there that need our help. I would much rather rescue an animal than anything else. So um, yeah, I just love. That's just a love. beautiful story. Thank you. It's a really beautiful story. And you've, you know, you've upgraded mice for for Malibu beaches, so I'm happy for you. <laughs> From the New York mice that are the size of rats. To be sure. Um, well, Sarah, thank you so much. This was lovely, and I'm so happy that you're taking over all our screens. <laughs> thank you so, so much. Have a good day. Thank you, bye. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. My uh, little furry creature, her name's Mary Richards, named after the title, Mary Tyler Moore's character from the Mary Tyler Moore Show. I'm too young to remember it being on television, but um, I watched it, I guess I saw it, you know, probably on like TV land or one of the cable channels in some hotel room when I was on location working and feeling homesick and it made me so happy. And I ordered all seasons on DVD and I used to travel with them so that I could watch them on my laptop when I was traveling for work because it was so comforting to me. I also really responded to the Mary Richards character because it was pretty groundbreaking when you think about it. I mean, this was a woman who broke up with her fiance, moved to the big city, Minneapolis, Minnesota, in order to pursue a career in broadcasting, which again, at the time was very unheard of. Well, I had the most uh, incredible male dog, his name was Buckley, and I had him for years, and he was my love and my roommate and my best friend. And, you know, like all animals, unfortunately, he had to go live on the forever farm with his mom and about a year went by after Buckley left us and my vet Dr. Werber who I loved um, called me one day and was like hey I think it's time and I was like it's not time and he said just I work with a rescue they need a foster over Thanksgiving for this little dog would you just foster her and so that's when I picked up Mary and um, she basically curled up in a ball and just like 
I carried her around in a tow bag for two weeks. And then it was the day before the adoption where I was supposed to take her and then all the people come and like, I just lost my mind and I, I called my husband and I'm like, I can't, I can't get rid of her. And he's like, oh my gosh, I'm about to shoot a live show. Fine, we can keep her. Like, please don't bother me at work anymore. So my timing was really good. But there was really something so special about having this little creature with me um, that did like, I think, lower my blood pressure a lot. And I, I can't think of an um, exact moment in time when I knew she was staying with us, but it just felt like, oh, this is a good thing for me. I feel like I shouldn't have to tell people why it's so important to <laughs> adopt instead of shop. I mean, there's just so many animals that need homes. And there's even now so many like breed specific rescues that if you're like, well, I have to have this kind of breed of dog or I need, you know, hypoallergenic or whatever, like you can find that. There's just so many animals that like are needlessly euthanized. I mean, every day that could easily be adopted into homes. And I think that, you know, Fostering is such a great way to see how a pet's gonna work in your family. I mean, you can find such great animals and they're so happy to have a home and to not have to live in those cages. And Mary's like this tiny little cute, like teddy bear sort of fox raccoon looking dog, but she's really scary if she wants to be. So that took some getting used to and a lot of training. And she has chilled out a lot. She's really feeling self-confident. She's really feeling herself these days. Um, I started traveling with her when I go on location to shoot things. And I brought her with me to New Orleans to shoot the thing about Pam. And she went over everyone on set. And in fact, Renee Zellweger's character, Pam Hupp, has a dog. And I can't tell you how many of my friends texted me after that first episode aired. And they were like, is Mary in the thing about Pam? Like, no, there is only room for one actress in this family. Um, but Mary was there and she was like running around and she was such a cutie. Sometimes when she's like a little judgmental and mean, I like to think that she's like my alter ego. My favorite thing with Mary, I love, I love going on really long walks and Mary really loves to go on long walks. We've walked seven miles in one day together. I mean, she'll just walk and walk and walk. I think she would walk until she would drop. The thing about Mary that's funny, like the thing about Pam, I just realized I said that. But the thing about Mary that's funny is that she plays really hard to get, but she's so tiny and cute that people keep like, they just keep wanting more of her. They keep wanting her. If she lets, if she lets you pet her once, then you just like want to keep petting her. But like the next day she might be like, I don't really like, I'm not like feeling you today. She really does march to the beat of her own drummer. And she's, uh, she's not someone that can be, pin down, you know, like she might like you one day, but then she might not like you ever again. Every day is a new day with Mary. That's what I always tell people. Mary has made my life better in every single way. I used to get so homesick when I was on location. And now like when I have her with me, it's so much better. She's, she gives me a reason to get up in the morning and like on a day off. And sometimes I'm like, mm, I miss my husband and I'm homesick. She like, I think genuinely brings a lot of joy to work. Like she runs all around hair and makeup when we're in the trailer and she loves it and everyone brings treats and gives them to her. And she just, animals bring a lot of joy and they definitely like calm people down, I think. And so, um, yeah, she's just made my life better in every single way. Um, minus the dog hair that, <laughs> but she's little and it's not that bad. But I do usually have a lint roller with me. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
and good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, missing in America. Listen to the full season now. I was walking Reese, and this girl was like, oh my God, that's Reese. Like, it's Reese. And I was like, what? And then they're like, wait, if that's Reese, that must mean that that's Chloe. I was like, <laughs> you people know what my dog looks like, and then you realize it's me. <laughs> like, she's like more famous than I am. Hi, it's Chloe Kim, and this is my pet tail. <laughs> she goes, this is my cute little Australian Shepherd Reese. She is four years old, and she is my best friend. I've always wanted an Australian Shepherd, like since I was a kid, I've just always wanted one. So I went online and found her. She was actually all the way in Texas. And the day I was gonna go pick her up, um, something came up. So my dad had to fly to Texas to go pick her up. So <laughs> my dad's such a trooper, but he flew to Austin and um, Met, picked her up there and then flew back with her like an hour later and um, my dad just like came, walked out of the terminal like with this little chubby spotted dog and I just put her in her lap in my lap and um, it was just love at first sight she like would follow me around everywhere she was my first puppy like I've never had a puppy before so I had no idea what I was doing she was like had really bad separation anxiety in the beginning so i remember like sleeping with her like downstairs in the living room on like a body pillow so uncomfortable but i did that for like three days and then i was like okay maybe i should just let her you know do her thing at night she actually kind of looked like a Reese's pieces when i first met her because she had like these really like dark brown spots these really white white spots and like like her little caramel spots so I just thought she kind of looked like a Reese's Pieces, so it took me a few days and then I decided I wanted to name her Reese. Reese has the biggest personality. She is just so down for an adventure. Like the minute I stand up, she's like, okay, cool. Where are we going? Like, what are we doing? I'm like, chill. Like, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom or something. But she'll like always follow me around. She's just down for anything. She loves to play. She loves her ball. She loves spooky balls. She also loves the little like doggy puzzles where you like, where she like does the little puzzles to like find treats. And she's really smart and she's just a little cuddle bug. She's kind of standoffish sometimes. Like she's like, okay, mom, like stop petting me. Like I don't want love. But the minute she wants love and attention, she'll just snuggle up to you and just like flop on your lap, kind of like this. And then she'll just stay for hours. Reese quickly became like a very important member of the family. When I told my family I wanted a puppy, like an Australian Shepherd puppy, everyone was so against it. Like, because, you know, I understood because I travel a lot and um, that would mean like they'd have to take care of her while I was gone. And then we got her and my sisters came over one day when she was still like a baby. We got her when she was like eight weeks old. So when she was still a baby, they came and they instantly fell in love with her. Cause she was like so small and just like, just this cute little bundle of joy and energy. And now they argue over who gets to watch her when I'm gone. It's like my parents want her, but then my sisters want, my one sister wants her, but my other sister really wants her. So they're always just arguing about who gets to keep her. <laughs> we do almost everything together. Just anytime I go outside, I always want to bring Reese. But we, we do everything together. We're going to Mammoth and she's coming with us and she loves the snow. So it's perfect for her. She loves snowballs. She loves digging in the snow. I took her to Mammoth actually when she was a baby, like the week I got her and took her to the snow and she had so much fun. I remember like the minute she stepped on, she just had the zoomies and she was running in circles and I couldn't get her back because she was just so excited. She was digging holes everywhere. She gets so excited. Like we'll pull, we'll drive up to some snow and she'll start whining and just wants to go outside. Like it's crazy. And she just 
loves to dig out little ice cookies. She'll like carry them around. She'll like play with them. So it's fun. <laughs> She has been around while I was training. My parents brought her to Colorado when we were training and it was so much fun. I would go to the like ski resort and go throw her ball like up the hill and she'd like run up the hill and get it and come back down and she like loved it. I just don't know what I'd do without her. She just gives me something to do because I feel like I've been so just like kind of sad, I guess, that we have to be inside all the time. And trying to do the right thing is kind of driving me crazy. But um, it's nice because she like motivates me to go outside more, like go on a hike or like go on a walk and like go take her and, you know, have fun. So um, she's been nice. She'll like whine if she wants to go play or something. So I'll always take her out when she does. But she just makes me happy, you know? I just love, I love it when she's happy and it makes me happy. Like I, my life revolves around race. Even when I'm in Switzerland or something and I'll see like a big field of grass or like snow or whatever. And I'm always thinking about her. <laughs> it's like Reese would love it here. I might move here just for Reese. Reese has made my life so much better, I think. Reese is my, seriously my best friend. She's always there for me. Like when I have a bad day and I'm like crying, she'll like come and lick the tears off my face and like sit next to me and just like always, she'll always keep an eye on me when I'm sad. It's the craziest thing. Like she won't leave my side. Or she's like very protective, like very, very protective. Like um, if someone like, if like a stranger come is like walking towards us, she'll like sit in front of me, like sit on me, like in front of me and like keep an eye on that person. And then when they go, she'll like go back and like play. But um, even like when my boyfriend, she gets jealous because she's actually and has a crush on my boyfriend. I figured that out. She's always cuddling my boyfriend, always around my boyfriend, always looking at my boyfriend with these loving eyes. So if he tries to hug me, she'll like put herself in between us. It's the funniest thing. And she'll just like look both of us like crazy. But um, she just brings so much joy into my life. Like my family and I just love her so much. It just makes me really happy that she's happy. I, I literally treat her like my child, like she's my daughter. Um, so even like when people like compliment her and like, you know, I take it very personally. Like I'm like, oh, thank you so much. Like I also think my dog is beautiful. <laughs> um, she just makes me so happy. I just think we do everything together. She's down to do everything. She is so smart and such a good listener that it's like just so easy. She makes having a dog just so easy. And, I, and I'm so grateful for her. I don't even think she knows how happy I am to have her in my life. But everyone loves Reese. She's just a likable dog. Like I will always bring her on set with me. Um, and she's just, she like owns the set. She'll like walk around. She'll like go get pets from everyone. She'll like run laps. She gets zoomies and it just makes me happy. Like knowing that I'm taking care of something else that's like happy to live with me. And, like share my space, share their space with me. I also like, she's cute, you know? <laughs> she's so cute. Come here, one last time. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> She's so cute. I love her so much. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> What do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. 
These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hi, I'm Lester Holt, and this is my pet tale. This is a Lucy. Lucy is a Labradoodle. She's two and a half years old. Of all the dogs I've had, and I've had many, she's the most loving, sweet dog I have ever had. Can you give me hugs? Come here, give me. She gives really great hugs. Come on. No. My other dogs had passed on, and we took a break from dogs for a while, and my wife and I were sitting in an outdoor cafe in Manhattan one day and I looked over and there was a dog under another patron's table and I said immediately I said that's the dog I want I want that dog and it was a dog looked just like this I turned out to be a an Australian Labrador like Lucy and we went on the hunt and uh, we got her at eight weeks old we got her actually just days before I moderated the first presidential debate so I remember we were, what do we do with this dog? I've got to spend all day at this university getting ready for the debate. And we actually hired a, uh, a babysitter to come and, uh, and be with the dog. But she's, um, she has definitely become a big part of our lives. We got a high five? All right. Fist bump? All right. She likes to be part of the family unit. If we split up somehow, somebody goes into the store or goes into the dry cleaner and she's waiting outside, she freaks out because she loves being part of the family. And we love having her part of the family. She was a really crazy puppy and she did not like separation and she has, I guess it's the poodle part of her, she's this ability to jump straight up and she would just go nuts whenever we were out of her sight. You know, from that puppy demanding mode, she quickly went into the giving mode. There was a time about a year or so ago, I was down with a nasty flu bug and, you know, I was laying in bed and, you know, you're just kind of miserable and you got the TV on and Lucy pops up on the bed and just curls herself around me. I think I even posted a picture of it and it was just kind of a great moment. It's like, you know, that's all you want right now. You're just sick and miserable and to have a, a cute little puppy, you know, curled up with you. It's, you know, it made a really lousy day better. You want to catch that, don't you? Ready? There it is. Good. Woo! She's a really a party girl. She likes toys. She will come up to us and give that look like, let's play. What she loves more than anything is, is a tennis ball, your basic tennis ball. Oop. Ready? Catch it. Good girl. It's a strange talent she has, this ability to take her paw and actually push the ball toward you, and then she wants it to roll back to her. She waits for me to come home and some play some more, and we, and we have finally weaned her off uh, this, this incessant need to play when we're binge watching TV. Somehow we got into this horrible habit. We would sit on the couch and, and watch TV in the evening, and she thought it was time to play fetch. And so you'd get rid of her, you'd throw something, and she'd bring it back. And then, you know, she thought that was part of the routine. But we have weaned her off that now, so she's learning to kind of settle out in the evening along with us. Hi. You see that? No, high five. Okay, high five. Okay. All right. This one. Yeah, whatever. Want a box? You want a box? She's very dependent on me. Uh, she doesn't like when I'm gone. When I come home from work, she puts on a celebration like you wouldn't believe. And I'm like, I was only gone six, seven hours. Like, listen, lighten up. Oh, okay, kisses. <laughs> she always brings a smile to my face, and it's you know, it's nice to be, it's nice to be missed. It's nice to be loved like that. She will come up to me like this very often if I get down, and she'll actually give me hugs. Lucy's made our lives better in in so many ways. One, she constantly makes us laugh. She's, she's a little performer and we're always smiling and we're always you know sharing pictures of, of, of what she did today. She does have her own Instagram account and it's really pretty amazing to watch her little pause with the phone. I, it, it's, but she posts fairly regularly. Um, I'm sticking with that story. She also gets us out. She loves to walk. We love to walk. We love New York City and so when you have a dog you've got to get them out. A lot of people complain about it. Um, I know when it's, you know, 23 degrees and drizzling and snowing, maybe not so much fun, but, uh, you know, she's a great excuse for us to get out and, and enjoy our city. My wife, Carol, and I, we have always loved to laugh, and, and Lucy gives us plenty of reason to laugh. She is as silly as we are.
it is hard to believe it has been nearly 30 years since our next guest burst into the Hollywood scene. Back in the 90s, Scott will start as Bailey in the hit show Party of Five. These days, Scott is starring in a new Netflix film about a couple of underdogs. It's called Rescued by Ruby. It focuses on a Rhode Island state trooper who hopes to join an elite canine unit with a shelter dog as his partner. Scott plays the man in charge of the unit. I know how much you want this, how long you've waited. I'm a short guy. I barely made the height requirement. I had to work twice as hard to get to the same place as everyone else. I'm used to working 10 times harder. Like a guy who lists his shortcomings right off the bat. Scott <laughs> is here, and his wife Kelly joining us as well. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The cutest thing ever. They both just said, I love you right before right. this. Still not right like before this segment started. <laughs> A last minute reminder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so Scott, cute. you said you knew right away, as soon as you saw this script, that this was the movie you'd been waiting for. I did, I did. And not just because the character was uh, a short guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the movie has incredible heart. You yes. know, uh, I think we all love a dog movie. I think these days to have something that's going to fill us with some joy and some positivity is always a great thing. But this was not your average dog movie. It's a true story based on this young Rhode Island State Trooper whose lifelong dream was to be a canine officer. He himself uh, struggles. You know, he has attention issues. Um, and he can't afford one of these expensive dogs that are usually trained for this work. So. It's this beautiful story of these two creatures who on their own are struggling to mm -hmm. find what's best in them. And through meeting each other, they bring that best out. Mm -hmm. And they always say, you know, working with children and dogs, you don't do. That's right. How, how <laughs> was it working with I have to dog? say it was incredible. So this a dog named Bear uh, was the dog they cast to play Ruby. Uh, had no experience in was front of Was it really a, a, a dog from a shelter or something yes, like that? Yes, I saw yes. that in the credits. I was like, wait, what? It's incredible. I mean, the whole movie but, uh, on camera and behind the scenes is an incredible advertisement for rescuing animals. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, yes, this dog was saved and uh, and we're making a star so of him. Cute. For anybody watching, this is such a good movie. I was just telling them I watched it with my nine-year-old son last night and he was at the edge of his seat and t it felt safe watching it there was, yeah. you know it was like it reminded me of like Lassie back in the day I mean it's just such a feel-good yeah. movie did you get an education to working with the dogs and a hundred percent yes I mean uh, you know one of the great things about being an actor is you get exposure to some of these worlds you wouldn't have otherwise so meeting real canine uh, teams the humans and the partners mm -hmm. we shot on Vancouver Island and some of the people you'll see in the movie are actual canine That's cool. uh, teams oh. from from the local department they were technical support Support, but they also shared their wisdom and their knowledge and their love of the work mm -hmm. they do. So it's kind of a love letter to people yeah. that do this it's incredibly good. important search and rescue work. Mm -hmm. So it's Rhode Island. Uh, did you have to work really hard to get the accent there? We worked <laughs> it's on tricky. it. Yeah, it is tricky. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I had this little vocal exercise. There's this actor that I've always loved named Ron Eldard. So I would say, Ron Eldard shops at Pottery Barn. Oh, okay. And he walks to the house saying this, by the way. It's <laughs> and hysterical. it becomes, Ron Eldard shops at Pottery Barn. At Pottery Barn. Ah. Yeah. It's funny you say this because <laughs> it, this is a movie about a dog, and my husband and I, he's from Boston. Yeah. I don't think that dog and log rhyme. Mm. He thinks dog and log rhyme. That's right. Oh, that's you're right. right. Dog. Yep. Dog. Yeah, Harry, yeah, yeah. Gary, oh, that's oh, another oh, one, right? Oh, like, oh, that's yeah. funny. And, yeah. and Grant Gustin, who people might know from The Flash and mm. an all around incredible guy and great actor, he and I would just kind of stay in the accent throughout the day, mm -hmm. and it made it easier to not. Pull in and out of it, but it was really, yeah, it was really, yeah, fun. It's, it's tough to do. Yeah. Hey, um, Kelly, did you, did you, do you, do you know where the box of VHS tapes from? Party of oh, I do. In the house. I know. Exactly have you, dusted, where they are. you showed them to the kids? <laughs> what are, what? We talk about this a lot. Like we're not sure what the age is to sort of dip back into that That's and show funny. them. You, you'd have to guide that train. How old are they now? Your kids? Our oldest is twelve, so he's right there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There were some yeah. mature I think he could. subject yeah. matter. Twelve. Yeah. You have nine and seven. Yeah. Right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, you're the, well, you were saying about the movie being comfortable and safe. Mm -hmm. I feel that way about Party Five, but I think it kind of dipped into some heavy. Oh yeah. Topics. Some heavier storylines. But if we watched along with them, and so we could have conversations. Conversations yeah, you can about talk the about more it. mature yeah. stuff. Well, before you leave us this morning, let's talk about you have a book, a new book. It's called Flow. Yes, tell us about, about it for today. Yeah. So we were talking about how much worry everybody has right now. It's at an absolute fever.
fever pitch, and mm -hmm. flow stands for finding love over worry. Mm. Um, it's also wolf spelled backwards. Oh, so, oh look at that. that this, by the way, story. flow came Jeff, first, yeah. and I saw that <laughs> second, which was He held it up in the mirror, and all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah but what you were saying, Al, too, I agree, we have a better way. We can do things with our mind as well. Mm -hmm. And all that stuff about menopause was kind of scary. Yes. Right. I think things like flow and what's in this book can sort of help us to challenge that and not drop into worry and not drop into fear. Because yeah. oh, yeah. that is really what, that's what we need. Do you have a quick tip um, for us? I say a lot, so it's it's all thought work. It's how mm -hmm. we're choosing to look at the world. Um, but in this case, it's probably not where you would think. We have to be moving our bodies. We have to have food in the morning, nourishing food. We need yeah. to take a time to just quiet our minds. Mm -hmm. And I really prioritize that. In the beginning okay. of the book, before I get into the Harder stuff. It's, it's not hard. Details. It's not hard. It's, all, it's quite well, simple. Scott and Kelly, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you, guys. guys. Thank what you a joy. So good. Thank uh, you. You're just pure life. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. After a two-year break, the world's ugliest dog contest returned over the weekend. With hopefuls from far and wide gathering together in Petaluma, California. Okay, but when all was said and done, there could really only be one winner, and it was Mr. Happy Face, a 17-year-old Chihuahua mix. And right now, we're so happy, happy to welcome him to our plaza along with his owner, Janita Benali. Did I say your name right, Janita? You did. Well, I mean, how is Mr. Happy Face taking this newfound fame? I'm not sure that he has, it's been fully realized. <laughs> I think he, is, he had his first airplane ride, which okay. was really exciting. Aww. And this is quite possibly the most people that he's ever seen. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> well, it's all in good fun. We, I always feel kind of bad because we're sitting here saying it's the world's right. ugliest dog, but you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Absolutely. How did you get involved in, in entering him into this contest? So it's actually a really strange story. I wanted something different to do for my birthday. Uh -huh. um, I'm not from Petaluma, I'm from Arizona, and I was just in town and I reserved a chunk of time to mix and edit uh, a radio show that I'm piloting for youth empowerment called Indigenous Youth Nation. Yeah. And we had, uh, my niece had said, we're gonna be there and you should enter Mr. Happy Face. Oh. And I was like, no, he's too beautiful. Oh. Like, his soul is right. too beautiful. You'll come in last place. Yes, that's exactly Where what I thought. Where did you get Mr. Happy Face? So I adopted Mr. Happy Face from a shelter. Uh -huh. And um, he came from a hoarding situation uh. and um, where he was very badly abused and neglected. And uh. it took a long time for him to feel okay with human touch. Mm. Oh, and wow. how old is he? He's 17, right? 17 is what I was told. 17 years old. The name itself, Mr. Happy Face, how, how, did, you, how did you land on that? I landed on Mr. Happy Face because he, when I met him at the shelter, uh, he, he was, I asked to see the most uh, unadoptable dog. Okay. Um, after my first choice had been already adopted. And I had already made the drive. So he came hobbling out Aww. and he was oh. so happy. Like he just, he looked happy. Like his, 
You don't see it now, but he has this enormous tongue that is <laughs> no, almost is it? as is it? long. Is it? Is it? Is oh no, this is time? this is not it. Oh, oh that's really? That's this is a sample. Oh, it's like an iceberg. Yeah. So this is a sample, but it it's is an iceberg. almost. You only see the tip right. of it. I get it. Underneath yeah. is yes, a whole other huge, tongue yes. situation. Oh, yes, there but is. Mr. Happy Face beat eight other pups. What do you think it is about Mr. Happy Face? Is it the the mohawk, the enormous tongue, the the head tilt? Like what? What was it at the end of the day? I think it's that he has this incredible capacity to show so much love. Uh, and I think that that's really what came through, is that the world is, it can be ugly enough, yeah. you know? And so if we can just add a little bit of like kindness and compassion, yeah. then we yeah. can just make yeah, this whole world so Janita, much more beautiful. You have a lot of love too. <laughs> I love that you went in there and said, show me the unadoptable dog and said, that's gonna be my pet. You're amazing. Thank you Thank so you. much. Really Congratulations. Having Congratulations. You Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. What do you win? What did uh, so we actually want a trip to be here at the Today Show. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Okay. All right. Let's go, Mr. Happy it. Face. <laughs> Look at that smile. Thank you so much, Janita. All right, it's time to get our game on. And today we're playing one of our favorites. It's called Doggle Ganger. Yeah, Hoda, this is your favorite this, this time. Okay, so just as a reminder, Hoda, you're playing for Haley. Of course. And Jenna, you are playing for Paula. Okay. Perfect. So, as a refresher, here's how it's gonna work. Okay. You two will be alternating. You'll see on the screen a person and three dog options. It is your job to choose which dog belongs to its owner. Okay, this got game it. Is this really is so Last easy. Last time you said it was all in the eyes. Let's see what your tactic okay. is this time around. Okay, so the person, in order to ring in, you have to stand on the corresponding Wait, paw ring print. In. Yeah, yeah we just we're walk versus over. each other. Yeah, no, we go one at a time. You're, you're one. You're one at a time. Yeah. But you know, okay. ring in. Okay. And then if it's not your turn, you will be waiting in the doghouse. Do you have dog ears on? So do you. You do have dog ears. Yeah. Dalmatian and a, and a little brown puppy. Okay. So sweet. sweet. Okay, okay Hoda, ready? you're up first. Are okay. you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, Bye, let's put them on up. Okay, this is Miles from New Rochelle, New York. <laughs> oh, simple. Miles B. Unfortunately, oh, it's C. That dog is oh, so sad. A. It's A. That's his dog's name is Sadie. Sadie. That's okay. okay. It's okay. It's, it's okay. Right. okay. Okay, Jenna, ready? Yes. Good I'm luck. Great at this game. Go this ahead. is Lauren from Houston, oh, Texas. Oh, I know this one. It's the most obvious of all. Oh, is that what you're going to go for too? She doesn't get to steal. No, I know. I was just wondering. Go no. ahead. No. That is incorrect. You know where I was going? <laughs> I knew it was C. You know why? Because it looks like C <laughs> would be right. That's not true. That's her lab. Woody. No, but look at the eyes. Fine. Okay. It's the eyes. Zero, okay. zero. This game's going well. Hold up. This yeah. is Ellie from New York, New York. Is it A, B, or C? Sorry, this is a layup. <laughs> yes, you are right. Slam dunk. <laughs> that is Ellie's dog. That's Chris. called boo. Okay. I'm getting this right this time. <laughs> All right, Jenna. Did you just call me a boo? No, I said boom. This is C, our former graphics C. coordinator from Tampa, Florida. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, is it A, well, B, we know C, or so. I know C, C, but do you know C's dog? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> no. Oh, what? what? what oh, just happened? I'm just going to tell you what went down here. No, I'm going to tell you what went down. Let me tell you what went down. Jenna was here, and you you looked at her like, no. So Jenna, I didn't wait, mean wait, to. Wait, wait. So then Jenna went like this. That's not true. I see. I know she stopped. See, there they are. I've you seen that picture. I, I'm sorry. I did not. Um, I did not realize I made a face. I will cover my face this like time. This. No, I didn't no. mean to. I swear. But that's her dog toast. That's okay. We're going to give you that point. Okay. okay. Thank you. Karma will come All right. Hold on. I'll give you a face this time. Ooh. This no is faces, no Mallory faces. from Don't Athens, faces. Georgia. Hold on, let me think for one second. Mallory, Mallory, Mallory. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, it's it A, a and that's so her dog. Easy. Look at her eyes. <laughs> but C is one of my favorite kind of dogs. That's this, this game is really. Well, you guys are tied, actually. You're doing well. Right. Tied. Okay. <laughs> Jenna, this is Nora from Columbus, hey, Nora. Ohio. A, uh -huh. B, or C? You do not know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. It's locked in. Go ahead. You pick one. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Is it ducky? <laughs> Skinny dog? <laughs> or puppy? <laughs> or puppy? I'm no! It's wrong. Sorry, it was Skitty Dog, and that's what I was gonna pick. The <laughs> Italian Greyhound named Dog. Gio. Okay, you have to you have to look away. Wait, no. wait, wait, no. No, you didn't get two. It was one. Okay, one. No, wait. I have two. I got the you other one. Two. I got yeah. C's dog. If you remember correctly. Oh, after that. 
Go okay, ahead. Hoda, this, this is, is Rachel and Michael from New York, New York. They, do they both look like their dog? That is, hold on, let me look. It's so well, easy. This is really like a siblings or dating game, too. <laughs> Cuddly. They're beautiful Our games couple. are super brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. You got it! That is correct! That's their mini golden doodle the jagger. Okay. Wow, okay, it's tied, guys. Okay, tie breaker. breaker. Ready? Wait, okay. It's tie no, this is for this is for both of you can get okay. this. Okay, good. We'll each pick. Either of you can pick. Okay, good. Okay. This is Jackie from Canahan, Illinois. Go ahead and pick yours. He looks like Blake. There he does. <laughs> Go Jenna, ahead. you are the winner. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. That is her dog's name. Bow, wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, yippee, wow, 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 yippee, yo, yippee, yay. Yay. Bow, wow, yippee, yo, yippee, yay. Do you still, yay. Do you still yay. think this is your favorite? Do you I do love this game. Okay, good. Not I great. love this game. Okay, I still love the game. Good. Team Jenna wins. That means the folks at Bed Bath & Beyond Sorry, are sending Paula a $300 gift card. But don't worry. We're sending Haley a Hoda and Jenna t-shirt. She does. Haley loves that. Haley loves that. All loves right. It. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Thank okay, you. if you want to be part of Donorama, head to HodaAndJenna.com. Hit the connect button. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just again. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Start today. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just again. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Start today. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, Missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Wouldn't it be great to know first thing in the morning? I think we hear Rucker. Clip out Mike before Clip something out. bad happens. Uh, yeah, because I think he's going to the bathroom. I definitely don't want to hear that. Of a day is in store. Do you ever like to know that? Yeah, we don't have a crystal ball, but we do have something perhaps even better. 13-year-old Noodle the Pug oh, and his noodle. human, Jonathan Graziano, <laughs> together. They have been setting the daily tone for millions of people all around the world. Take a look. It all started with a single adorable TikTok back in August. Uh, you are here just in time for another round of No Bones, uh, which is the game where we find out if Noodle has bones this morning or not. All oh, right, so we found that he does not have bones this morning. Noodle the Pug has since become a daily harbinger of our collective battle. Do we really want to get out of bed? And millions across social media are turning to 13-year-old Noodle to find answers. Every morning, Noodle's owner, Jonathan Graziano, attempts to roust Noodle out of his slumber. If he flops down, it's a no-bones day. So it's a no-bones morning, no-bones morning. Time to lay low and maybe not take any risks. So, like, if today was the day you were planning to call your sister and tell her you just hate her husband, like, today is not the day to do that. If Noodle remains standing, it's a Bones Day. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's a Bones Day. Look at that. Time to head out into the world and tackle the day with gusto. You know what that means. Treat yourself today. Get that extra guac. Buy that jet ski. There have been over 200 million TikToks alone about this wise old sage in the form of a pug. If it's a no bones day, I just stay in bed. 
One user even claiming they were talking about him at the Pentagon. A lieutenant colonel at the Navy Pentagon legitimately just started this briefing with, I don't know if it's a bones or no bones day, so let's just get started. Noodle the Pug might not be a matter of national security, but at least he's keeping us all entertained. Well, Aww. we are having a bone day because we're so excited <laughs> to meet Noodle and Jonathan. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank What's you. Up, Thank Noodle? you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. So this is just crazy. like Noodle's thing since you've had him all these years. Yeah, like I I adopted him when he was seven and a half years old, and we just learned very quickly that in the mornings, if he is not ready to wake up or go yeah. on a walk, yeah. he's he's gonna do what he can to prevent that from happening. Well, I know you hear from people when, when good things happen. Yeah. So what good fortune has your puppy brought to people? So Noodle has brought joy to so, so many people online. I, I can't believe it. There's this no bones video is, is something that I would just do as a silly little ritual for us in the morning to check in and see how he was doing. And then it took off and people yeah. started using it as a forecast for how their day was gonna go. And I leaned into it. You know, we all need a little positivity right now. Yeah, and, yeah, a little extra guac. I'm, yeah, I'm an extra guac. I'm, well, I'm especially bursting. if it's from the internet. The internet's gonna do something nice. Like, let's roll with yeah, it. Yeah, right. let's roll Jonathan, with it. Yeah. But to be clear though, like a no bones day doesn't necessarily mean a bad day, right? No, thank you. We really need to change the narrative on a no bones day. I think a bones day, seriously, if you're listening. <laughs> so a bones day is a day where you just have to go after your ambition or a task you weren't, you were yeah. putting off. You know, a no bones day is a day where you just have permission to, you know, wear soft clothes. Self-care. Yeah, self-care, yeah, self take a yes. bath. Yes. Can we, Mental can we day. see if today's going to be a bones day? Or well, do you want a wager day? on this? Oh, I'm all, I'm all about a wager. Wait, is there anything about the television appearance that's taking Noodle out of the routine so, every day? The television appearance, and there is a table full of cheese over here oh, to yeah, my yeah, left, yeah, which yeah, Lydia, yeah. you can Lydia see he is, he is... Noodle is looking at Lydia, Lydia Bastianich so, yeah. right now Lydia's with there. loving eyes. Uh, <laughs> he knows about this, let oh, me tell you. We will take this answer for gospel, right? Yeah, I mean, we, okay. have to, we, we have to. We have to. All right, okay, okay. All right, let's see, buddy. I'm going no bones. I'm going bones. I'm going bones. I'm going bones. I think it's... I'm going to go no bones as well. I'm taking no bones, because... Let's I think it's, it I want a I want to have a no bones day. <laughs> you just, we okay. want sweatpants. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. ready? Take your time. Take, Take your time. time. Yeah. Take your time. I know. Lay down, buddy. Get Lay up. Down. Lay down. Bones day. Bones. It's a bones day. Wow. It's a bones day. You did so. Oh, I have to go to the gym now. Oh. You did so. I know. Unfortunately, you have to. It was the cheese, oh, wasn't it? No, yeah. it was the cheese. Yeah. You're pretty spectacular too, John. We should. Jonathan, you are everything. I really. Said, Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. This this dog Thank is you my so much. joy. And oh. does this surprise you? What has happened since last August when you put this oh. thing up? Oh. I mean, oh, he's getting out. You're yes. taking oh, like an extra bone. This is a weird temperature of our country, and and like you're sort of setting the agenda for society. Yeah. I, which I had no intention of doing i had no intention of that but it's 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 been overwhelming it's been overwhelming it's been a really incredible again it's been so positive i get mentions from people who say they you know they they were wait you know it was a bones day so they decided to propose to their partner Aww. it was a you know they put a down payment on their house a woman the other day said it was a bones day so she bought a lotto ticket and won half a million dollars no like, way oh my gosh. serious bones bones day she'll be on she'll you should be on the show tomorrow the yeah, i, book her. I can't yeah. keep up with it like i cannot keep up with it and it's just so um he is he's yeah. the, he's the light of my life and to get to share wow. him with people is wow. really really special well, he is oh, yeah, there really oh wait now it's no bones now it's no bones no, it was, now, that was the we, moment our rule is that all he has to do is show us the bones and then he can do it. Right. Yeah. By the way, God bless you for adopting yeah. noodles later yeah. in life, Thank too. You. There's a lot of love there. Thank you. It's Thank one you. of the things about all this that's been, you know, it has, again, it's been so positive and people have been so nice about yeah. it, but it, I'm so keen oh. to let people know, like, I adopted Noodle and he was seven and a half years old. Yeah. And yeah. there were, he was loved his whole life, but yeah. he just needed, he needed to find yeah. a new home. And yeah. there are so many dogs out there that are in yeah. the exact same boat. And I, I got awesome. the jackpot. If you ever Thank like you. need any like dog sitting, what Noodle yeah. can say, we love Noodle. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello. Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello. Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas and my birthday or something. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hey, Donna, we Hi. ready to play. Hi, ladies. Right. I'm ready, too. Okay. All right, let's find out our favorite part, who you're playing for. Okay. And on Team Hoda, it's Peckaday Hyman from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Lake Charles. Yes. Go, Peckaday. And on Team Jenna, we have Julie Frady from Chicago, oh, yeah, Julie. Illinois. I call her Jules. You do, All right, you. let's see who's going to win this time. This is an important game because before okay. we start, we've added something new. Okay. A tiara. Oh, my gosh, a Donnarama <laughs> tiara? Right now, this is because right now the two of you are tied in Donnarama wins. Oh, this is the end? Starting, no, it's not the end. It's just the beginning, some would say. But <laughs> starting today, if you win the round, you will be crowned the Donnarama <laughs> champ of the week. And isn't there nothing you want more than nothing. to be crowned? Nothing yes. I want. Okay, so now to the game. Since it's national, bring your dog to work day. Hmm. We're bringing back Doggleganger. Doggleganger. Uh, I love, love this. Remember it well. Yeah. But here's how it works. I'll okay. show you a picture of one of our viewers and three dogs, and okay. you'll have to guess which dog belongs to the human to on the screen. Okay. okay. We'll alternate, All right. and this week, Jenna, you're up first. Oh, great. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Jenna, here is Carly from Ocean City, New Jersey. Okay, Carly. I think Carly's do doggleganger is B. You are correct, what? Jenna. How did you know it? Love That's her. her dog, Lily, and she's okay. an Irish cream golden. Okay. Wait, I need to have the monitor here. I can't see. Come on. This <laughs> Hoda. Is not, I can't see it. It's Let's push that monitor position. a little closer. Yes. Okay, hold up. This is PJ from Morristown, Tennessee. Mm. PJ from Easy. Morristown. Oh, I mean, simple, her. simple, simple. This is such a layup. Sure is. It is. B! Yes! <laughs> Hoda, good job. That's his dog, Miles, and he's really a now Another one for you. <laughs> okay, tied. Jenna, this is Nikki from New York. Okay, Nikki. Wow, Nikki looks just like... <laughs> oh, I got Nikki. Just like C. Oh, no, no, try A. Oh, I was going to fix C, too, actually. Well, that's her that pup Winnie toy that, poodle. I feel like that's a trick. That was hard. That was, I mean, all of these are pretty, Don't you know. Don't worry, Pekka Day. We have another one coming. <laughs> it's okay. okay. Yeah, I like okay. that we're calling her Jules. Okay, Hoda. This is Tevin from Nashville, Tennessee. Okay, Tevin, don't you worry. I'm just focusing. Sweet eyes. I'm going with A. You know, I would have guessed B. A, but it's C. Oh, C. That's Amos oh, and the two-year-old Boston Terrier. No, the cutie. There's a science behind it. It's very sad. It's, it's the so eyes. Peccadet. It's the eyes. Okay. Okay, Jenna, this is Benton from Nolensville, okay. Tennessee. Oh, oh how sweet. I know, Benton's adorable. Oh, I, I think know Benton. Benton looks just like B. You are correct. Oh, that so, by They're the way, both adorable. Ringers, and that's, ringers. that's Graham Cracker. How cute. Oh, that's his Graham name? Cracker. Graham Cracker. That's what I called my Cavacoo. grandma. Graham Cracker. Okay, Hoda. Mm -hmm. Here is Cheryl from Atlanta, Georgia. Hang on, Cheryl. Oh, Cheryl, you're B. Wow. Oh, yes, that is Pippa. You know, I, it, the was the, it was the top, it was the high pony <laughs> yes. that gave it away. Yeah, I agree. And Pippa, what a cute name. Yeah. Okay, Jenna, this is Dr. Jonathan from Fort Mill, South Carolina. Okay, well, Dr. Jonathan oh, yeah. I looks it. just like A. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's C. Oh, what? what? Between A and C. I know. I would have been between A and C, now too. That's so a hard together. one, yeah. That's Buddy Bichon uh -huh. Frise. Okay, Hoda. This is Michael from Washington, D.C. A, B, or C? Michael, you're A all the way. Yeah, I know. Is that kind of a no-brainer? Yeah, it was a gimme. <laughs> I can tell. Him together. His dog's name is Dolly. So oh, wait, cute. that's it? No. Oh, wait, Jenna gets well, one chance to talk. No, you went first. Yes, that's actually it. Can I, I have know. my tiara? Hoda, yes, you absolutely. <laughs> 
Look at good day. Team Hoda Wins, the folks too. at Barnes & Noble are sending Pekka Day a $300 Pekka gift card. Day. Don't worry, Jenna. Julie, you are getting a Barnes, you are getting a Hoda and Jenna <laughs> mug and t-shirt. Oh, and Julie, I know, don't you look adorable. adorable? Thank you, my mom got them for me. Oh, okay. your mom is so Wait, cute. This that is tiara so is lovely. It fits you so nicely, and it matches with the pink. It's a little are you gonna small, wear it all but day? <laughs> no. I think you no. should. No, really, Hoda, you if should. If you want to be part of Donna <laughs> Because you can't move, right? Head to ahodaandjenna.com. Hit the connect button. I knew from the moment that we had Clifford on the leash and we're walking around the room the first time that this was her dog. The bond between humans and dogs is unlike anything else, something Tiffany Becker knew right away when she saw her eight-year-old daughter Alexis and her new four-legged friend. It's a connection that's even more critical when the animal is more than a pal, a trained service dog for those most in need. Hey there, guys, good job. Canine Companions, we provide service dogs for children, adults, and veterans with a variety of disabilities. Puppies are placed with their volunteer puppy raisers when they are about eight weeks of age, and they remain with that individual or that family for the first 18 months or so of their lives. They are then returned for professional training. Alexis suffered from health problems before being diagnosed with hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, a genetic disorder known as HHT, at two and a half years old. We started visiting the Cincinnati Children's Hospital HHT Center of Excellence. December of 2016, which was her normal scan, uh, we got some very devastating news. That she was regressing in all of her milestones. By September of 2017, Tiffany knew something wasn't right. You could just tell she didn't feel good and something was really wrong. We walk into the emergency room and the last thing my daughter said to me before her life changed was, Mommy, I love you. My head hurts. Alexis had a massive seizure and was airlifted to another hospital. I just felt like I basically was saying goodbye to my little girl. The third day we were there, the doctors came in and said, you kind of have some choices. We can either keep going or we can start weaning stuff off and basically let her pass. I was very angry at God. I went in the bathroom. I, I let it all out. That's when a new doctor came in and gave the Beckers some cause for hope. Nobody in the U.S. that they know of has done this treatment before and wanted to know if we wanted to try it. And that was my moment of, okay, this was my answered prayer. Alexis was slow to respond to the treatment until... They offered to sneak Chevy, their facility dog, up to see if she would respond to animals. And I just took her hand and I made her pet him. And we did that for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then I stopped petting him and she started moving her hand for the first time. It was just unbelievably emotional. We started bringing the dog more and more. Soon after, Alexis spoke. She said, mommy, daddy, dog, and kiss. And look, he's coming to you. That was a good boy. Now, four years later, Alexis continues to improve and is ready to work with the service dog of her very own in canine companion training in New Albany, Ohio. Throughout the two week long process, candidates work with several dogs. One of the really cool benefits of being here for team training is seeing other people get matched with their dogs as well. For Alexis, her strongest connection was with Clifford. She will run into the walls or furniture or whatever. And Clifford was the first dog I've seen her work with that anticipated her getting a little too close. Clifford, push. They had the opportunity to really solidify how they work together. We've seen this amazing development in Alexis. During graduation, the puppy raiser has the opportunity to hand the leash over to the individual that the dog's been matched. And while there are tears, it is always tears of joy and excitement and just ultimate pride. I feel like I've come full circle. My first dog went to a young lady. We got to watch her grow up. So this is exciting that he's gonna be with another young girl and I'll get to watch her grow up with Clifford. 
When I look back at Alexis and her inability to even really pet the therapy dog Chevy initially to now looking at her walking around the room with him, holding a leash, having him sit, petting him, loving on him, it's just really miraculous. Oh my God. My goodness. <laughs> Good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Man, I'm glad I stuck around for that. Wow, that she's pretty is amazing. beyond touching. Right? That is unbelievable. That poor woman's story and that poor child, my yeah. God. But you can't even say that because not she's anymore. thriving yes. and she's doing wonderful and through she's the help of a dog. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? We're oh. the greatest movie ever. Yes. Just saying. Yes. In now your face. Everybody will go see Clifford. In your face, Dune. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, that is not it because Keenan's co stars Darby Camp and Tony Hale had a special message for Alexis. Okay, Clifford and all their fellow graduates. Not only did Paramount, the, the studio behind Clifford the Big Red Dog, make a contribution to Canine Companions for Independence, they also gave everyone in Alexis and Clifford's graduating class free passes to the movies. Sweet. Mm. Very dogs sweet. included, y'all. And they can bring their dogs. Oh my God, That's Kenan. fantastic. Kenan. You're on the Thank side you. of the angel. I'm on the right side of I things, know, apparently. Yeah. That is a beautiful thing. Shout out to Jordan Kerner. He's like the main producer that brought me on to the project. Oh. He did the Mighty Ducks back in the day, so he gave me my first job. In, oh. the, in the business and we've been, remained friends all over the years and he approached me about it and I was just like whatever you need you know but I, little did I know that it would be Doing you know good. the involvement of such a thing I was already a fan because you know John Ritter and Kel yeah. was yeah. on the yeah. show yeah. back in the yeah. day and yeah. also those books are so and iconic they're great. don't you did yeah. you grow up yes. reading those Clifford the Big yeah. Red Dog I kind of did I was a little yeah. older but I still would you know pick them up just because there's a big giant red I dog know. on the cover <laughs> And like, what is this about? So, well, yeah. Kenan, thank you for hanging with us today. My pleasure. Thank All you right. for sharing that touching moment. News is happening now. To look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, Missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Yes. Start today. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, Missing in America. Listen to the full season now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC's Kerry Sanders has the story. He's in Lake Worth, Florida for us. Hi, Kerry. Good morning. Well, good morning, guys. These are not pets. These are service dogs, and they're trained specifically to work with vets who have PTSD and sense when those emotional problems kick in so that they can diffuse the situation before those emotions escalate. Palm Beach County, Florida is a long way from a battlefield. And while you can't see anyone's scars here, Titan King, come. some come. of those who wore the uniform when our nation needed them most are still at war. But it's in the memories that haunt them. An enemy IED explosion in Iraq to Sergeant Jack Lord retired sounded just like that dump truck tire that blew out. While I was driving, the back tire of the dump truck blew. Like, it wasn't just a flat, it was an explosion, like, you know, a, a, a tire blowing. And you heard? I heard it, I felt it, for a moment I was there. I mean, it, it, I swerved, I, it just, it was one of the scariest situations since coming back. And in your mind, were you back in Iraq at that moment? For a split second, yeah. Sazzy, who's a good girl? There you go. Since he got his therapy dog, Sazzy, Jack says, triggers are muted. She's there to help me with anxiety. Uh, she's there to, to, to be my buddy. 
not too different than you might say in the military watching your six, 100%. watching your back. I've never thought of it that way, but you're 100% right. I, I am never more comfortable than when I'm with my army buddies. I feel the same way with my dog. Semperfi Service Dogs is a charity that rescues pooches from shelters. And then, after months and months of training with those in need, the rescued dogs become the rescuers. I consider like having a battle buddy. Ryan owned a, a veteran himself, trains and matches vets with dogs. What's it like when you see the dog make a connection with a vet? When I see the connection, it makes, it's like the, you know, I might not be rich, but it's, it's spiritually I'm rich because I know I just changed not only that veteran's life, but just like you drop a pedal in a pond, it changes everyone's life around that veteran. There. PTSD in part is why veterans are 60% more likely to separate or divorce than the average American. I have severe nightmares. It's been a challenge, but he's better. He's getting better. In just the last year, Emma joined the Kirk Mikowski family. If only Vinny and Linda, married 39 years, had known how a PTSD therapy dog could help. Vinny is a Vietnam vet. The memories of death and killing in the jungles still creeps in five decades later. Those things stick with you and uh, it doesn't a, fade. It doesn't fade. They just keep reliving it. Drafted in 1968, fighting in Vietnam a year later. The kicking and punching and, and my nightmares. <laughs> what it all comes to you? out. And we have pillows between <laughs> us to make to protect her. He's fighting. He's fighting. He's trying to stay alive. He's physically fighting in the jungles. And his nightmares take him back there. Now, when he begins to thrash, Emma goes to work. I'm sleeping in bed and she's at my head. If so you start having night terrors? Nightmares, she'll wake me up. That's her job? That's her job. As we honor our vets this week, they ask for understanding. I've had some people when I walk around with Mattis that will just say, like, look at her, that fraud, because it doesn't look like I have any disabilities. So I would just hope people would, instead of judging right away, just take a second to ask someone, like, hey, cool dog, why do you have them? This morning in the Upside, a very special dog from the Furry Friends Rescue in South Florida. Lucy ended up being much more than a friend for her forever family. Take a look. Being dogless with grown children for a mother means that you have extra love and no place to put it. When Rebecca Claus's dog, Buddy, died in 2018, it left a void in their family. We would have pizza for dinner and I'd have extra crust and I'd look for him. The following year, Rebecca, her husband, Steve, and their son, Luke, rescued a new furry companion, a puppy named Jack. I brought him home. He instantly sniffed everything, checked out the backyard, and made himself at home. He had 24-hour attention and fell in love as fast as we did with him. But when the pandemic forced millions to work from home, Rebecca noticed her pup was getting restless. It got to the point where his constant playing started to really uh, hinder my day and put me in a bad mood uh, because I wanted to give him all of the attention, but I also had to work. Rebecca returned to the animal rescue and saw that Jack's mother, Lucy, a feral dog, was still there. I saw that same beautiful coat and that same beautiful face with those eyes, and I knew there would be no question she had to come home with us. We brought her home that night and instantly started to look for a place to hide. And the furthest point from our front door is my son's bedroom. And his door was open and that's where she ran. For weeks, Lucy stayed in that room, spending time with Rebecca's 19-year-old son, Luke, who suffers from epilepsy. He was so, so grateful to have this dog hang out with him because Luke is a very calm uh, young man and so Lucy was perfect for him. And just two months after Lucy's arrival, she proved she was truly a lifesaver. So I, I, I literally opened my eyes, heard the baby monitor, we had slept through it. Lucy came to tell us that Luke was having a seizure and that he needed us. Two, three weeks later, it happened again. And this time, um, rather than us both going to Luke, I stayed with Lucy to thank her and to reward her and recognize her so that she knew that what she did was right. 
and good and that we loved her for it. The two are now inseparable, showing that protective mother and son instincts know no bounds. Lucy is a is this miracle dog that comes out tail wagging when we get home. Luke loves Lucy, and um, you know Lucy is the dog that um, that Luke, Luke probably always needed that I didn't even know. And we are so happy to report that Luke wow. is doing well, and Rebecca tells us that Lucy is slowly but surely coming out of her shell. Such a great story. We'll That's right amazing. Back. Maria Shriver, her daughter Catherine Schwarzenegger Pratt. Oh my God! I just gotta keep saying. It's a by the way, this is, there's a big there's a cause near and dear to your heart. Yeah. We're surrounded by puppies for for a reason. I mean, tell, there's yeah. no better way to start the morning than to be surrounded by puppies. Yeah, tell us about this. Personal opinion. So I, I do a lot of work with Best Friends Animal Society, and these puppies yeah. are all here today that are adoptable oh. dogs from Best Friends Animal Society. But we're doing an amazing event called Strut Your Mutt, um, which is you know on October 26. I'll uh -huh. be at the one in Los Angeles, and it's a day. Um, in about a dozen cities across the country, all dedicated to raising awareness and money for adoptable animals oh, and rescue cool. animals. Um, and it's something that's really, you know, a big passion project for me. I have my little dog Maverick that I rescued six or seven years I ago. Wrote a book. Yeah. Yeah. I did, Maverick and me. Yeah. And um, so I've done a lot of work with Best Friends Animal Society, and this is like a big event for them. And if you can't be a part of the event, I'll be at the one in Los Angeles on October 26th. Um, but you can go online and donate, and you can donate to Best Friends Animal Society or local animal rescue shelters. And Did you all always have dogs growing up? Yeah. Oh. But, so not, but not adopted dogs. Yeah. yeah. We, well, we, we started with an adopted pig. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah about that pig. <laughs> Bacon. <laughs> anyway, uh, we had a pig that I was, was told would stay small. <laughs> we and were told it was going to be a didn't... little micro mini pot belly yeah. pig. Like, it was a major. No, it was major. It was <laughs> huge. No, I did not. I did not love the pig that picked up the lawn. And no, I didn't love that situation. But these but dogs guys, are very lovable. Yeah, and you yeah. did. You guys grew up always with dogs. Had dogs. Always, yeah. always have loved dogs, loved animals, being around animals. I think for kids, especially, is such like an incredible gift that you can give them. It teaches them about unconditional love, yes. responsibility yes. at a very young age, and yes. um, Maverick has been a huge gift in my life and has taught me so much and you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, so if you guys want more about Strut Your Mutt, <laughs> you can go to hodaandjenna.com. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky, to cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. You open the door for so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas or my birthday or something. <laughs> To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I've played all over the world at some of the great venues, the Sydney Opera House, Carnegie Hall. But all of that aside, my favorite audience to play for is right here at the ASPCA. As a professional violinist, I spend a lot of time 
on stage under bright lights and you know with sort of feeling like the world is watching here the world that's watching is you know my best friends <laughs> that are wagging their tails and will like it no matter what I do I think wanting to become a volunteer at the ASPCA uh, for me was rooted in my uh, desire to reconnect with animals. I've been an animal person all my life. I had a family dog uh, that I was very fond of and the loss of her many years ago was very difficult and I saw working at the ASPCA as a volunteer as a way to reconnect and to uh, get back in touch with the animals that I love so much. On my uh, application to become a, a volunteer, I sort of jokingly wrote, maybe I'll play the violin for dogs. I had no idea that there was a program that would even lend itself to that. With the Animal Recovery Center, um, we're treating animals that have been victimized either by direct physical trauma or long-term neglect that results in chronic medical conditions. And over time, as they're here, we are working to recover them, not only medically, but behaviorally. The volunteer support that Martin provides is part of a greater volunteer program called the Storytelling Program, in which volunteers come and read to our dogs. In this case, Martin is delivering music to our dogs. They're providing much needed socialization. This brings the dogs um, an opportunity to meet new people and learn that strangers bring good things. Here, I just feel like I can come and just make music, and I know that no matter what comes out, really, that, that, that my audience is going to, in some way, benefit from it. At least that's my hope. <laughs> it's an emotional experience. Uh, and it has been from day one. I can get attached very quickly to uh, some of these dogs I've played for, and then a week or two will pass and I'll come back and some of those dogs will not be here. I have to say to myself, well, I'm happy that the dog has gotten better and is ready to move on to the next chapter in their life. And maybe there will be music there as well. At just seven years old, Roman McCann has already helped rescue more than 1,900 wow. dogs. Isn't that incredible? Awesome. And if that's not awesome enough, it landed him the title of 2018's AASPCA's Kid of the Year. With the help of his mom, Roman began making videos helping to rescue animals all across the country. And this summer, he's going to be featured on Animal Planet, Planet's Dodo Heroes. Let's take a look. Dogs need a family where they will be loved and treated how they deserve. They need space to run around and have fun. I think dogs deserve more than a life in a kennel. You ready? Mm hmm Go ahead, just start it. Hi everyone, this is my buddy Sniper here. He's almost two. Mm -hmm. Super sweet. Hi everyone, this is one of my new pals. She's got the big old Dumbo ears. And he's just waiting for his best home ever. We gotta find him a home. Oh, wow, that's Roman. really great. You're here Went with his mom, Jen, and an adorable Hi, Jen. dog from the ASPCA named Lainey. Hi, Lainey. Roman, we love you. You want to know why? <laughs> you put your love for dogs to the test, and now you're saving dogs' lives. Mm. Does that feel pretty cool? It does. It feels amazingly cool that, I mean, from that I get, that not many kids say save dogs because right. they're either playing video games or watching TV. That's right. So what Wasting would you their say to those Fortnite. kids that are watching Put right Put Fortnite now? down and start saving some dogs. Yes. yes. Right, Roman? Why right. dogs? Why do you love dogs so much? Well, I love dogs because they let you have a friend to play with yes. and they are they give you company whenever you're lonely or sad. And so how did you decide to make <laughs> these videos? Because it's such a smart idea. And, and could you believe it when they started taking off? I could not believe it when these videos were starting to take off because it was just like a rocket. <laughs> Take it off. And Jen, what did you think when Roman started making these videos? Uh, 
Uh, Roman's definitely motivated me to be better as a human. Um, when he was four, he had recognized that they needed help where we were living at the time. And so um, it's been pretty crazy to watch him grow. He's almost eight, so he's been doing videos for about four years now. So um, it's amazing. What's it's Project amazing. Feed Him Ride? Uh, we actually That's fund transports. Yeah, we fund transports for dogs in Texas and now in Augusta, Georgia, and we move them north so they can find homes and families and stuff. And um, so we've moved just shy of 2,000 dogs in a little under two years. By the way, um, this dog, Lainey, is, uh, is a bowler. It's up for adoption. You can go to Hoda. Well, you know what you should do? Well, why don't yeah. you look at this camera right here and just pretend like you're making one of your videos. Yeah. What do you have to say about Lainey to anybody it? watching? This is Lainey. She's eight years old. She is a American bulldog? Nope, she's a bulldog. She's a bulldog, yeah. and she loves belly rubs, <laughs> and she likes the back of her ears scratch, yes. and a lovable dog, in fact. And she's mm. super sweet. Oh, she well, is. Roman, you know what else is super sweet? You. And we wanted to honor you. We have this check for Project Freedom Ride for $10,000. That'd be enough for two transports. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> what do you say? Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Yeah, but it Thank you. Trish. We have to tell you it's from New Trish. And also, Aww. that's not it. We are inducting you into our kids in the spotlight wall of fame. Look at that, Roman. You're there. You you deserve it, all the hard work you've That's done. Awesome. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to it school? Does. Start today. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Remember Miracle, the dog found alive in the rubble nearly one month after Hurricane Dorian slammed the Bahamas? Well, this is a really good day for him. We waited for this day for a while. NBC's Carrie Sanders joins us from Florida with Miracle, where he is about to join his forever family. Hey, Carrie, good morning. Well, good morning. And look at Miracle, just so full of uh, energy, of course, still eating, gaining so much weight, going from 16 pounds to, well, now 34 pounds. So look at him, just so ready to go on to the next step in his life, which is leaving here at Big Dog Ranch Rescue and heading to join his new family. This is Miracle. 34.8. Hard to believe this dog has almost doubled his weight, learned to walk again, and is so full of life. When his story began on the doorstep of death. Found in the wake of Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas, trapped under rubble. Miracle survived an incredible three and a half weeks. He's a fighter, he's a survivor, and he's a great symbol of hope for people that have lost everything. Lori Simmon, founder of Big Dog Ranch Rescue, coordinated the team that saved Miracle's life. He was extremely anemic and his muscles on his hind end and wasted away to nothing. It took a drone with heat seeking capabilities to find him buried beneath the debris. Good morning. We'll look skin and bones, but alive. You may remember when we first met Miracle here on Today, how weak and emaciated he looked. And then how he surprised us all. This is the first wow. time we've seen her stand up since Look at that. Look at the strength. Oh, okay, wow. let's look. That was like watching a flower bloom. Like I'm literally watching it. That was awesome, that was Carrie. So cool. 
Since then, Miracle's been fed special food and treated with doggy hemp oil to quell his anxiety over the sound of thunderstorms. Do you remember me? Do you remember me? Oh my God, how are you? 10,000 people sent in applications to adopt Miracle. It's a miracle that we got Miracle. <laughs> Today, one lucky family gets to take them home, Clark and Brianna Beatty, and their three daughters. They've had to keep the news a secret. He finally gets a boy. That's right. <laughs> and three little girls who are planning a big party for his arrival. The start of something good. Miracle, who was alone for three and a half weeks, now finding his forever home. We love you, Miracle! for pets with adoption numbers skyrocketing. That's led to a lot of questions. Here with answers, Dr. Brett Levitsky, the chief medical officer at Veterinary Emergency Referral Group in Brooklyn. Dr. Levitsky, good to see you. Hey. Thanks for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. Hey, so we, we've asked our, our viewers to send in their video questions. So we want to start with Neve and her dog, Archie. And here's her question. Okay. How much exercise should my dog get on a hot day? So we know uh, temperatures are at highs all across the country. Mm. I mean, it is brutally hot. So, so what do you tell Neve, Dr. Levitsky? So this is an excellent question, and I'm really glad that, that she asked it, especially uh, for Archie. Um, dogs need exercise. We know that. They love to go outside and play. But as the temperatures rise, we need to decrease the length and intensity of their activity. If not, we run into the risk of, of heat stroke. That means um, in the heat of the day, you want to avoid going out and running and jumping and playing. Go for your longer walks in the morning and the evening when it's a little bit cooler. If you can find a patch of grass to run around on, that's, that's better. And if you can find some shade, that's even better. In the city here, it's a little bit difficult yeah. because we have a lot of pavement. If you have to take your dog out, you should limit it to short walks so they can go and do their business and then come back in. Uh, they even sell little booties for their feet. Oh. Booties, that's a good idea. Yeah. Our, ne our next question comes from our booker, Stephanie's kids, Jordan and Cameron, who have a 12-week-old puppy, Sammy. Take a look. We know he's teething, but how can we make him stop biting us? Oh, that's <laughs> good. Do you have any healthy and safe deterrents from puppy biting? That is a great question. My brother and his family had gotten a puppy and asked me the same question. Um, so we have to remember that puppies will... Uh, chew and bite for a couple different reasons. One is that they're teething. So if we can provide um, a puppy safe uh, toys, such as this one that Molly had brought in today, um, that gives them an alternative to chewing on your hands or clothes or your shoes, um, that would be great. The other reason they chew is that's, that's how they play with their siblings and their mom. But when they get a little rough and they bite a little too hard, their mom or their siblings will let out a high pitch yelp. So when, they're, when they get to that point with you, you can do the same. Let, it, let out a little yelp or a little high-pitched owl. Um, also giving them a little time out when they get too rambunctious. I, you can stand up, put your hands in your armpits, and just um, give them a moment to settle down. What you don't want to do is yell at them because this is, these are natural things that they're doing. And yeah. you just want to let them give them an avenue where they can expend a lot of energy. So if they're getting rambunctious, take them outside to play. Okay. Now, we're coming up on the end of summer. A lot of folks squeezing those last-minute vacations. Our writer, Matt, his wife, Kristen, are heading on their first vacation without their pup, Indy. We were wondering if she might have more fun at a doggy daycare, or should we find a pet sitter so she can stay home where we know she'll be comfortable? That's a great question. That is. And, and what about for, for dog owners and, and for cat owners as well out there, Doc? So this really is a great question, and it really is um, dog dependent. Dogs have different personalities. So if your dog is very social, loves being around other dogs, very energetic, then you should absolutely look for a boarding facility because then they will get to interact with other, other dogs. And there are many facilities that have swimming pools and large yards for them to run in. If your dog is a little bit more shy and, doesn't, and isn't the life of the party and doesn't like to spend time with other dogs, then perhaps having a, a pet sitter come in 
walk them um, so they can stay in their own home, in their own environment. That's, that's for the best. Um, the third category that we can't forget about are the dogs that have underlying medical conditions and they require daily medications. Uh, you should speak to your veterinarian about possibly boarding at their facility so they can get the care they need. Um, and I certainly didn't forget about our feline friends. Um, cats can be a little bit more independent. They're not looking to go socialize and party with other cats they don't know. So um, certainly having a, a pet sitter that will come in a few times a day, spend some time with them in their own environment where they can play and be fed, uh, that's by far and away their preference. All right, we have a, ma ma a question. Do we have time to squeeze in one more? Let's, let, you know, let's just ask, doctor, really yeah. quickly, folks going back to work, kids going back to school, these pets are so used to folks being around all the time, what do you do? So you have to disassociate the uh, the negative aspect of you leaving. Dogs are pack animals. You're you're the most important part of their pack. So if you give them something positive and desensitize the negativity of you leaving, for instance, they have puzzle toys that you can put treats in or cream cheese or what have you. If you leave that toy with them as you're leaving, that's a positive that they associate with you leaving. The important thing is when you come back, you should take that toy away so they know that that's very special for when you leave the house. So oh, it takes right. away some That might be right. one of the best tips I've heard. In it's fact, true. you could probably use that with your kids. Listen, or you Absolutely. could just leave me with some cream cheese. Oh, there fine. you go. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> Dr. Levinsky, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Who mean Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Top story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. Who mean Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time? When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. All right, so if you've got a furry friend at home who's maybe a little too furry, you might want to check out yeah, this. Yeah, and we're not one. talking about our husband. <laughs> Donna got up with one of the country's top dog groomers, Jess Rona. Yes, you could say Jess is one of Hollywood's hottest hairstylists. So I asked her to share some of her best dog grooming tips as she embarks on her new reality competition show, Hot Dog. Take a look. Let's talk haircut. I want to see something fun and funky. Have fun with it, but I'll be watching. Jess, I'd like to start off with a quote Katy Perry said about you. She said, Jess Rona is to dogs as Vidal Sassoon is to the bob cut. I mean, it's still so surreal. I cannot believe that she said that. As an A-list dog groomer, Jess Rona is making the pups of Tinseltown a little more glam. But her life in La La Land started out a little differently. I wanted to be an actress and pursue that. And I was like, oh, well, maybe I could bathe dogs and also pursue acting. And so um, I just started to bathe the dogs. I was lucky enough to have mentors um, train me over the years. And, you know, 20 years later, here I am. It's crazy. What was the moment where you turned that side hustle into a booming business? Okay, when I started making these videos, these videos of dogs blowing in the wind in slow-mo to music. And it really honestly happened at a low moment in my life. I got fired from a job and I was just kind of like, I need a creative outlet. I was blow drying a Pekingese named Noodle and her ears flew up in the air. 
right as the music hits. And I was like, oh, this is a moment. Jess took that moment and ran with it. She started her own grooming business in 2014 and now has nearly 200,000 Instagram followers. Ooh. And the once aspiring actress is now executive producer and star of the new HBO Max reality show, Hot Dog. I think she's a star. Oh, yeah. she is definitely a star. Yeah, great job. Thank you. So Hot Dog is a joy-filled grooming competition show where in each episode, three groomers go compete to win the best in show, which is $10,000. It's a lot of fun and it spreads joy to the world. And that was our big goal in making this show. What is the craziest look you've ever given a dog? I dyed an entire dog a sunset before. It's vegan dye. Dye for dogs is basically like conditioner with pigment in it. There's no smell, there's no, it's not not like human dye at all. You give a lot of hygiene tips. What are the areas you think that people should focus on? Dental is number one, because if your dogs do not get regular dental cleaning, or at least get their teeth checked regularly, it could lead to huge problems. It could lead to infection, heart problems. If your dog will let you, just hook your finger in their lip, and that way you can take a look at their back teeth, or just take them to the vet. So we asked our viewers what questions they had for Jess. So Beth wrote in about having trouble trimming the fur on the underside of her pup's paws. What tips do you have for Beth? That looks like a doodle. For trimming the paws, I highly recommend investing in a pair of cordless clippers. Just skim over the top of the pad. Your dog needs a little fluff in there to protect their feet when they go for walks. And I'm gonna take my finger and just feel inside his pad and just make sure that there's nothing in there. So Emily wrote, we give him baths at home and brush him. Is there anything else we should do to keep his coat shiny and healthy? Oh, that looks like a beagle mix. I would say condition him when you bathe him. I would do a leave-in conditioner on him. Use a de-shedding tool if he sheds, which would help promote some new hair growth. What are some tips you can give people who are grooming their dogs at home? Learn all about brushing your dog and just kind of make it into a ritual. Brush your dog while you're watching Hoda and Jenna. Yeah, that could be your ritual. Another tip from Jess, when brushing your dog, put them up on a yoga mat or a towel so they're not slipping around. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. That's, good. that's all good advice. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We are going to start with some good news. We've got each other now. Doesn't it weekend. just feel good to be back to it school? It does. Yes. This is so healthy. Here's what's happening in your The crowd is ready. SG, you ready? Refresh and reorganize for fall. Start today. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. This is so healthy. Doesn't it just weekend. feel good to be back to it school? It does. Yes. Start today. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now that looks like a fast dog. Is that faster than a greyhound? Well, if you put him in a race, who would come in first? You know, if you had a little jockey on him going. Uh, let me ask you this. If you're going to put him on a football team, which would be your wide receiver, which would be your tight end? 
Who can go the farthest the fastest? Well, I, I don't know any dogs that play football. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a great one. Ted Willard I, was the yeah. best in that movie. I'm going to rewatch that one. That's a yeah. good one. He was yeah. playing <laughs> Joe Garagiola. Oh. It was so fantastic. That's what we call classic best in show, yeah. by the way. We played that for you, getting you ready for our next story. <laughs> All right, so here it is. So there's a new study out, and it suggests <laughs> that a dog's breed actually has very little to do with its behavior. So NBC's Gotti Schwartz joins us with details on this study. Hey, Gotti. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, if you did all kinds of research on different dog breeds, trying to figure out which might be the best fit for your family, well, this new study kind of suggests that you might as well have been chasing your own tail because scientists now say breed doesn't really have that big of a bearing on the personality of your puppy. They're stereotypes that are a little rough to shake off. Marley and me's loving lab. The loyal lassie, or legally blonde's little chic chihuahua. Hi, I'm Elle Woods, and this is Breezer Woods, and we're both Gemini vegetarians. But a new study looking at over 18,000 dog owner surveys and DNA sequencing of over 2,000 of those dogs suggest you can't judge a pup by its breed. You shouldn't be putting all of these expectations on a dog just based on what its breed is. It's almost like don't be a breedist. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to go there, but you can. <laughs> Dr. Eleanor Carlson is a geneticist at the University of Massachusetts Chan Medical School, and her team found breed type only accounts for 9% of canine behavior, and factors like sex, age, and environment have a stronger pull on dog personality, which might explain why even big dogs want to be loved like the little ones. That almost sounds a lot like the dog version of nature versus nurture. And we say this percentage of it seems to have something to do with genetics. And then we call everything else environment. And so the best we can really say based on our data is that it doesn't seem like there's a big genetic contribution. So we had to do a doggy beach outside of LA and found two chihuahuas tooth and bean that couldn't have been more different. Their owners say the study makes sense to them. Each dog is an individual just like humans are. And then we met this very good, good girl, California, who stole the show with her tricks. Good girl, Callie, come. Do you think there's a big difference between different breeds of dogs? I think so. Like, I found that my golden is really mellow. But California's cousin, Maverick, definitely lived up to the name. So we thought he'd be very similar, because, you know, goldens, but he's crazy. <laughs> Scientists say the reason? At the end of the day, even though they look different, dogs are all really the same species. And most modern day breeds only date back 150 years. A blink of an eye on the evolutionary timeline. And now new findings to give us pause. <laughs> Not the way we think of our best four-legged friends. Okay, now, full disclosure on the question a lot of you might be asking at home. We wanted to know, too, and yes, Dr. Carlson is a cat person. She says she has three cats. She's actually never owned a dog in her entire life, but she also points out that makes her even more objective in that research, and, of course, she made sure that there were dog people on her team as well. Good job. Got it. Thank you. All right. Here we go. We are joining us as a professional dog trainer. His name is Tom Davis, along with some very friends. So, Tom, okay, we heard the study. Hey, guys. We heard the study, and that's one thing. But you're actually with dogs in practice. Every day. Did what the survey, uh, the new study showed, does that line up with what you've seen day in and day out? Right. Yeah, I, I think absolutely. We talk a lot about nature versus nurture. Yeah. Right? I see some dogs go for some really bad situations. Yeah into really good situations yep. and their owners come out on top because yeah. of their nurture to the dog. So it's nurture, okay. Yeah. All right, um, let's talk about the personalities and that nature versus nurture. Give me yeah. the percentage, like what plays in. Well, I think it's a huge percentage. I always tell people, a lot of, you're gonna get a German Shepherd and that German Shepherd may be different from the next one that you see, but the yeah. German Shepherd's always gonna be a big dog. Okay. So when we talk about the different genetics and the behavior, that may vary, but the size is gonna stay the same for the most part. Good yeah. question. And, you know, so many yeah. people talk about breeds, but what other things should you be looking for when it comes to personality of a dog? Just like Hoda and I were just saying, it's a lot about the size of the dog, the exercise of the dog. Okay. So if you get a Great Dane, the difference of the Great Dane may be different from the other Great Dane, but it's still going to be a huge right. Great Dane. Whereas Gatsby here is perfect for Exactly. Me. So it's going to be a small dog. <laughs> yes. you know, what can we do as owners as we all try to wrangle these pets here uh, <laughs> yeah. to make them more friendly? I noticed this one, Freya. It is friendly. It seems to love Craig's jeans for some reason. I don't, yeah. I don't know why. So, um, how, how do we make sure that they're friendly throughout? Well, the, the most important thing is, is start training early. 
One of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people make yeah. is they they wait for there to be a problem. Yeah. And I always tell people, as soon as you get your dog, start the training process early. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Start it off early. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is good. this is Stevie, named after Stevie, Stevie Nicks. Stevie she, Nicks. She's got a great personality. <laughs> Stevie's making fresh She loves you. Stevie. Stevie is a Come time. on, Stevie. I see that. Stevie's look at Stevie. a good girl. We'll have to hilarious. sign him up for training. Look, look at Greg. That's He's it. Bye. Right. 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 Wait, Roker. there's a loose dog. Wait, you, you got one more? Yeah, just curious. So. A lot of us go to a, an animal shelter yeah. and we want to uh, get, do the right thing. Yeah. Well, how do you deal with not knowing about your dog's background? Well, again, like the study shows, it's really about each dog is going to be different. So, again, I think a lot of dogs get a bad persona or bad rap because of maybe previous breeding or something like that. But what you're looking for is you're looking to give a shelter dog an opportunity for success. So you're looking for the size of the dog and, of course, how much exercise that dog's going to need. So you're looking for making sure you're compatible with the dog and your family is as well. This is chicken. Chicken is ready to fly out of the coop That's here, it. I think. Yes. Hey, this has been a great segment, Tom. Hey, man. Tom, thanks. thank you for all you yeah, do. Thanks yes. for having me back. Right. Appreciate it. So we're in the dog days of summer. We want to keep our <laughs> pups and cats safe in the heat outdoors. Oh, I'm here with little Magnolia. Here's what you need to know. Uh, we're here with Mark Peralta, the Chief Program Officer at Best Friends Animal Society. Welcome, Mark. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Good yeah, to so tell us. Um, I, I've got, we have Magnolia climbing up my uh That's and I want to say before we even start all of these animals are adoptable yes. so oh, so if anyone yeah. wants to tune in now and, yeah. and they, they need a home all right so let's start how do we keep our pets cool over the summer it's super hot out I think the first thing that you should do is understand when your pet is overheating. Mm -hmm. So there's signs of overheating, <laughs> not one of these, but multiples of these. So if you're seeing first off heavy panting, that's probably not super unusual for those of us that have dogs, right. uh, but cats also pant as well. Um, dry, bright gum, or excuse me, dry, bright red gums, mm -hmm. um, thick drool, right. um, yeah. vomiting, diarrhea, wobbly legs. If you're having combinations of these, yeah. It's a warning sign. So, so obviously you want to keep them cool, but you also have to keep them hydrated, just yes. like us. Hydration is really important. Hugely important. Uh, and there's things that you can do. I, I think it's first, it's, it's good to know uh -huh. that if water's a little too warm, a lot of pets won't drink it. So you really want to make sure that you're keeping bowls in shaded areas, or you can do something like this. This is just an example uh -huh. of a frosted bowl where you can keep actual, you actually have products that help you keep your water cool right. and fresh, and that's really important in the summer. Is there, a, is there an amount of water like per size of, that they should be drinking? I mean, they'll always drink kind of differently. If you're noticing they're not drinking at all, that's a warning sign. Um, also, uh, if you have a little pools, and we're going to get to that in a minute, sometimes pets can drink too much too, so you want to monitor yeah. it, but not really. And you just want to make sure that you're keeping it fresh too, so it's not mm -hmm. all day or, or the same water every day. Okay. okay. All right, yeah. moving on here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we also have, because you don't really think about, can, can we address what happened to Magnolia? Yeah, Magnolia you were, you were was wearing not, Magnolia, Magnolia, and now Magnolia yes. has disappeared. Magno I gave Magnolia back because I felt like she was a little TV shy. Oh. So, oh, here There you go. He, hey, wants, some, he wants some action. Okay, so tell us in the meantime. Uh, yeah. You know, you never think about paws. In, in New York City, <laughs> mm -hmm. the sidewalk gets so hot, and you see people walking their dogs with these, and they look ridiculous, but they actually do work. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is the most important thing to me. Hot surfaces are really bad for pets, and it can be sand mm -hmm. or it's pavement. So not every pet will wear booties, right. yeah. but a lot of them will, and it's just one of the many things. But a really good tip, if you go outside, put your hand down for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it's uncomfortable or yeah. you can't do that, it's too hot for your yeah. pet. If Don't you walk couldn't walk barefoot on it, they can't. And, yes. and if, you're, if you're like Jill, exactly. does, can you get these by Gucci? Is there any other? Are there, oh. are there, yeah. Very Varieties, okay. varieties <laughs> in every shape and color. Okay. All right, now moving on, very playful. Yes. Moving yeah. on to sunscreen. I didn't know this to put, and these are just some examples, to put sunscreen on your pets. No idea. Again, it just depends. So one of the things that people usually think of in summer is shaving their pets down. Don't ever do that. It okay. helps protect them from the sun. But, but some pets have white fur or thin fur. So just like us, they can sunburn. Um, what you want to do, like any pet, you never know how they're going to react. Their skin's going to react. So maybe take a dabble, put it down. But here's some examples of different things. But there is pet sunscreening, and it's wow. good to do wow. it. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. 
Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. We are going to start with some good news. We've got each other now. Doesn't it weekend. just feel good to be back to it school? Does. Yes. This is so healthy. Here's what's happening in your The crowd is ready, SG, you ready? Refresh and reorganize for fall. Start today. And what do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We got a group of dog owners. Their adorable pups are here, along with a professional dog trainer, Tom hey, Davis. Tom is uh, sharing some expert training and tips and tricks. Tom, good morning. Good morning to you. Good How morning. are you? Good to see Great. you. Good to okay, see you. so I'm here with Tessa, and yeah. she's got the sweetest puppy named mm -hmm. Arbor. And Arby, how old is Arbor? She's almost four months old. Four months old. So, what is your question? My question is, how do I get Arbor to stop chewing on something that chewing on things? Yes. That I want her to not chew on. Yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah. Puppy chewing is natural. They're teething and they're going through. And they just came from a group of puppies. So they chewed on each other. They yeah. rolled each other over. Yeah. So when they come and live with humans, they're like, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> so the most important thing is just teaching the drop command. What's so that? Teaching the dog how to That's drop right. something out of their so mouth. So if they have something, how do we teach them to let it go? So how do you do that? So let's see. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can get Arbor into something okay. here. Okay. It's going to happen. We're doing toy. Okay. Let's see. Arbor, what do you think of this? And Arbor's a little stimulated right now. Arbor's <laughs> seeing lots of pups. Good. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to teach the, the drop command. Okay. So right now she has something that's very excitable, yeah. which is food. Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to start saying, Arbor, get it on the food. Arbor, drop, drop. Yes, good. And then you just transfer to something else. Ah. Now, if this was at home and it was a sneaker, yeah. a couch, yeah. a toy. Yeah. How about your tone, though? That's you're like, you do drop it. it. You don't go, yeah. drop it. Yeah. You say, drop oh. it. Exactly. What nice. You, you say it nicely. Yeah, you want to say it yeah. as neutral as okay. possible. Okay. As what do you think? As neutral as possible. That's, you going to try? Yep. She's treat driven, so that, that'll treat work driven. for her. Okay. Sweetest little puppy ever. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Transfer. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Hey, yeah. Tom, Tom, I want to introduce you to Carter, one of our rock star producers here I uh, at the show. And and what <laughs> what's your what's your puppy's name again? Uh, Reggie Miller McKay. Reggie Miller, okay. Wow, it's yeah. Well, they're from Indiana. Big fans. <laughs> so, what, what can Tom help you with? So, Reggie's just over a year and a half old. Um, as you can see, he still has a lot of puppy energy. So, uh -huh. we've been trying to work on calm greetings. He gets very excited still. Yeah. What yeah. So, <laughs> all dogs are going to be excited. You know, when they when they see new people and they get stimulated. A lot of people, what they do is they set the dog up for failure. So, what you want to do is when people come over, guests, friends, family, the Today Show, whatever. People get excited. They come, ah, oh, Reggie, how are you? And he's like getting excited. So guest management, telling people, hey, we're in training. Mm -hmm. What I'd like you to do is just be calm when you come in. Because, of course, if I came in here going crazy, you yeah. guys would all be like, what's going yeah. on with this guy? Yeah. So it's not about the puppy. Right. It's about the guest. Okay. Yeah. All so right. guess, I call it guest management. So when people come over, just be calm. And so what I want to do is kind of demonstrate what normally people would do. And if you guys want to do it, maybe okay. you and Hoda well, can do it. Yeah, yeah, just get excited to the dog and just like, oh, there yes. you go. Reggie. <laughs> Reggie. <laughs> Perfect. Reggie. So, so then what you want to do is just use your leash pressure and then we have some rewards here. So if he jumps up, all we're going to do is we're going to give him a little pressure. Try it one more time. Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. Good. yes, I know, good. I know. You're good. a good puppy. You're a good puppy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. So then right when he sits just like this, <laughs> you yeah. give him a little bit of food. Ah. So using your leash in the house, everyone thinks the leash is outside. The leash ah, is your communication. Okay, okay. Dogs right. don't speak English, they speak, you know, leash. Right. Okay. Did, you, did you get all that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Carter, you got it? Reggie, did you get all that? All right. Reggie's Good job, Reggie. Reggie. Okay. I think Carson's Good. got get some. All right, hey, Tom, this is Ricky. Carson, what's up? Ricky, tell us about Mesmer. Hey, yeah, this is Mesmer. He's a, a four-month-old Australian cattle dog. Mm -hmm. And our question is around healing and just walking nicely on a leash. So I was wondering what tips you had around that. 
it's yeah. Kind of so what a lot of people want to do is they want to go out and act like there's a huge problem on the leash, and of course that's going to make things worse. So what you want to do is make sure that you're in charge, right? Mm -hmm. Shoulders are straight, eyes are forward, and we're going forward. So he's with you, you're not with him. Mm -hmm. So if you want to try to de demo it just right here, so shoulders straight, eyes forward. If you're both looking at each other, who's driving? Yep. Look forward. Don't run into the wall. Go ahead. Heel. <laughs> so heel. heel. Come and of course, the heel, you guys, is essentially the dog walking at your heels. Oh, nice. oh is that Yeah, nice? there heel. you go. I didn't know that. Little tip heel. there for you. Nice. Good, and you're going to swing around. So just swing around. Good. Okay. Hey, miss. And then heel. stop. Oh. Good. Yeah, and then back over. Yeah. What's a brake command? The brake command is, is huge. So when we ask a dog to do something, just like all of us who go to work, we want to make sure that they have a brake command. So brake is essentially the dog having a brake. Everyone thinks that if you teach your dog how to walk nicely on a leash or you teach a dog how to heal, yeah. mm -hmm. that they should do it the whole time, and that's not realistic or fair. Everyone has to take a break. So we want to make sure that when Mesmer's healing, we also want to have a cue or a behavior to say, okay, break, and then we give a dog an opportunity to be a dog or a puppy. Sweet. Yep. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank well, you. Some good stuff there, guys. Thank Absolutely. you. Ooh, the Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker.
brought to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Yeah. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky, to cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What do you love about fatherhood? The chaos, the learning. Is climate change one of your top priorities? What's your message to girls who want to make a difference in their own communities? Believe in yourself. These are our missing daughters and sons. We need anyone who saw something to come forward. She was wearing a black jacket, a black top. I'm going to bring my son home alive. Dateline, missing in America. Listen to the full season now.
Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? so many people. I love working with people. I did not do any of this by myself. Hello! Lizzo, you put a smile on yes. every single face. It feel like Christmas or my birthday or something. <laughs> Welcome back to you today. We got a lot to celebrate yes. on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
Every pet is different. The one thing they have in common is you. The need to find not just a home, but family. Whether you adopt or donate, you can help clear the shelters. Visit cleartheshelters.com for more. NBC News, streaming free now. Good morning. Welcome to today. We are going to start with some good news. We've got each other now. Doesn't oh, it weekend. just feel good to be back to it school? It does. Yes. This is so healthy. Here's what's happening in your The crowd is ready. SG, you ready? Refresh and reorganize for fall. Start today. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to you today. We've got a lot to celebrate on this Wednesday morning. It's good to have you along with us. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. Everybody's good, and that's it! Well, many Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? Hey, Miss Lester, hey, who's this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you.